to do could somebody come and take me away i've been in the tea without you and i got it in my head night and day but we are one step closer we're almost together put your hand in mine yeah we are one step me from this tree I've been in. I need to get in closer to you. I swear you might but see. Oh baby, I've been waiting for you. Now we are one step closer. We're all in this together. Put your hand in mine. Yeah, we are one step
watch the sun go down over the same old town like so many times before we look at the same old stars battle the same old wars like so many times before and i know that we're not perfect Oh, it's the season finale. Hello, everybody. Welcome to round number 10, the last one of the year. Oh, yes. 
So yeah, like I said, it's the last one of the year, round number 10, the last one that we're going to see this year. I've just heard myself again. Uh, so the stream's going to run a little bit differently today because I forgot to take the program home, so I couldn't do my usual overlay stuff. <laughs> uh, so yes, unfortunately, we are going to miss the program of events, but in the meantime, I can do it via my own voice. Yeah. I can do this one though, I'm your commentator Alex, I'm going to be here for the next six hours or so, something like that. Uh, so we've got an action packed day today, we also have, obviously it's Remembrance Sunday, so we're going to have a, a couple of minutes silence later on during the day. Um, not sure what time that is at, that is at 11 o'clock. Uh, so like, I, uh, like there is out on track at the minute, it is uh, just the two... Uh, sorry, not too loud practice. Five minute practice. Uh, at the moment, we have the junior practice number two, so we don't have a lot of time left to get the stuff done. So let's give you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the standings for this last section of to uh, well, of uh, this year. So hopefully, it takes a little bit shorter than this because I may have misjudged my timings. <laughs> So, Honda Cadet one actually isn't updated, uh, I didn't get the updated copy uh, as of yet, so that was the same as last time. for telling me that I'm being overwhelmed. <laughs> right, uh, so I uh, don't have to rush through this. This is all good. Uh, right, so senior Rotax then. Finn Smith leads the championship with 1,041 points. That is a big margin to Cameron Crockett with only 961. Ooh. Uh, Jamie Burt with 921, uh, 40 points behind him. Then Evie Plain stays in fourth with 920. Uh, Jack Maidman with 899 points, and only a mere two points behind is Bertie Wellesley. Bertie! Uh, so he will uh, have a fierce competition for today. I bet he's looked at it. And uh, it'll be him versus Jack Maidman today to look out for fifth and possibly higher up uh, in the championship. And Liam Purchase wasn't here last race, uh, so he's gone from second to last uh, to, well not to last but to seventh in that uh, in that lineup so as we all probably could have guessed uh, Harrison Crook take reclaims the championship lead uh, with 1142 points to Ian Brownfield's 1141 wow that is close in that championship for the 177s holy moly 
Right, so now that I don't have to panic and try and get everything sorted by the end of the day, uh, we can get on with today's action. Uh, for some reason, my overlay is not working properly. Why are you not working? See, this is what happens when you change and add new features. Hey, <laughs> Just to uh, let you all know, we do have some new features this round. Um, so this is going to be awesome and I cannot wait for that uh, so it is the gray so I wonder if it works now we'll find out a bit later on <laughs> There's a problem, I transfer between two different PCs for the editing, so we'll see how that turns out. So 177 Rotax and 177 Masters practice is out on circuit at the moment, as I have on my screen to my right, and out on circuit as well. Covered by three camera angles, one that's covered in water, and one that's covered in water on the inside. Uh, hopefully that will clear up through the day from the camera itself warming up um, we shall see how that goes so we'll be covered by mainly two camera angles um, so yeah it's it's a bit of a wet start today uh, it was rain I, I woke up I think it was about 6 a.m. initially and I thought no I'm going back to bed I'm gonna have a lay-in uh, so yeah it, um, it was raining quite bad this morning it was actually raining quite bad last night as well um, but uh, these are the conditions at the moment, uh, which is 11 degrees out there. Uh, cloudy, not with a chance of meatballs. Uh, so we shall see how uh, today turns out uh, for all competitors out there. Uh, so let's actually have a proper run through of the uh, running order for today. Uh, like I said, there is no overgrey graphics for it. Um, I, I forgot. Lest we forget, I very much did forget uh, a lot of that stuff. I feel like OBS is lagging. Then my streaming software. That's not good. I think that's what's causing most of the trouble. Hopefully it doesn't persist throughout today. Let's get the uh, track mic on as well. Uh, that actually stays outside. So an indoor microphone, ladies and gentlemen. Good outside, apparently. Right, so practice orders is five minutes, as uh, we all know. Um, and let's get some music on. Uh, so uh, we follow it up with the... Uh, we have 24 races today uh, from uh, this order. So it's Junior Rotax, followed by Honda Cadets. Then it's the Rotax Cadets. Then Senior Rotax, Formula Blue. And then the 177 and 177 Masters. Uh, so that is our running order for this weekend. I feel like we've got some internet issues up here at Clay. Because uh, uh, I'm getting a poor signal. That's a shame. That's unusual. But we seem to be doing alright. Uh, so we'll be monitoring that throughout the day. What? I don't know what's going on today really. Somebody must be downloading a lot of stuff <laughs> at the same time as me doing bits. Uh, so yeah, we are upcoming to 11 o'clock, so we might be able to squeeze in a heat uh, before we kick off with the uh, Remembrance Sunday stuff. Uh, obviously it is Remembrance Sunday, so uh, those will be uh, having a two minute silence, which we'll be also doing on this live stream here as well. But hello to everybody who's watching at home. Hopefully you're nice and warm in the dry. I know I am. Sort of. I've got a heater beside me. <laughs> As the rain is... Uh, I think there's like a sort of scurry outside at the minute. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is because the camera's getting worse. Uh, so there's a bit of rainfall today. Um, but nevertheless, we plow on through the day. That's what we do. That makes a funky effect on the screen. 
That's actually quite cool. I like that. <laughs> so we're going to get into the real stuff real soon. Uh, with all the racing, it's going to be rather competitive today. Obviously being the season finale and being the last one of this year. Hey, the transition works. So here's the grid for the Junior Rotax Heat 1. As a wild jewel. Ah, it's jewel. I want to try it today. Uh, so Billy Vaught on pole with Charlie Cox in second, Maxim Smith third, and Vlad Tom and Chuck in fourth. Where's Joe going? Let's get him on camera. Here he goes. Ah, it's jewel. Look at him run into the blur of the rain. We love you, Joe. We do. Oh, Joe, we love you. It's already kicked off today with me. <laughs> me going crazy. Standard, really, isn't it? Right then, let's go for the busiest one of today. Well, it could be busiest one of today. So go for the formation lap for round number one. I am <laughs> really having... What is going on today? Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get ready for a laggy stream. And <laughs> that's bad. God, Jesus, why? Can go. Yep, that'll do it. <laughs> uh, let's get ready for the first heat of today. It's the Junior Rotax. 22 drivers out on circuit for today. Let's get ready for the opening race for round number 10, the season finale, the last one for today. And we are racing straight away. Let's go into what is a damp. Billy's blind. Everybody staying. Well, I jinxed that one. Two spinners. But taking the lead at the moment is the 12, I think that is. Going down the back straight. You won't be able to see on your side, but I can on my side. Uh, so around the hairpin we go towards the horseshoe. Bit of a lead for the number 12 as the WC goes around the outside of the horseshoe. With lots of grip that side because he shoots himself back up into P2 but your official order will be on the left hand side of the YouTube live stream and we can get ready to go so coming down so is Charlie Cox followed by Joshua Withcombe, Billy Vaught, then Maxim Smith Vlad, Tom and Chuck, Jasmine Taylor, Reese Reed, Karthik Kometa, Jarek Metters, then Lucas Howell, that is your top 10 as we lead for another lap around clay. So around the horseshoe, we've got two going on the battling out of the hairpin into the horseshoe as the 30 tucks in front of, I think that was the th 36 or 39, uh, as there's been a lot of movements at the start of that race, uh, at the start of that lap even. So we come down the main straight once again and take a look at the gap so far from our leaders. Uh, yay, new feature. Uh, so that, <laughs> yes, new features, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so we can see the gap to everybody else here. Uh, so five tenths is the gap between first and second, but it's not that anymore. As we go into the horseshoe, it is a battle for first between what looks like uh, is that 12 and WC plate. So a battle between those two. As we move around the order of the circuit, coming back down the main straight once again. Flying on through. Fastest lap is currently Joshua Withcombe in that second place. He's showing pace early on through the S's, down the back straight for those two. And in third position is the 39 of Billy Vaught, who has Maxim Smith behind, uh, but is running smooth for the moment, those two. They're in a bit of a race of their own. And probably waiting for the front two to battle on with each other. Speaking of battles coming out of the hairpin, we have two drivers coming out. It is the 30 and 30. 
Uh, I think that's the 84. I can't read. Uh, as, <laughs> as we still fly on through there, having a battle coming out and switching places. But coming down the main straight, we go. Uh, we have our first contact warning, which now is featured on the left hand side of the YouTube live stream. Ollie Wise being given that uh, contact warning. He is currently in 10th position in this race. Speaking of races, we have an early retirement for one driver out of the horseshoe, unfortunately. It looks like she has retired there. That is the 13 of Izzy Lafton. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, she's a new entry this year. Great to see some new faces on the uh, Clay Pigeon Car Club Championships. Uh, so uh, not a great start for her, but she should hopefully bounce back for Heat 2 later on today. Junior Rotax has been the first race of today as well. Uh, a bit unusual, different running order to normal, uh, well, to the normal stuff. Uh, so having the juniors out first brings us great competition to begin with, as there's plenty of movement up the board, including Joshua Withcombe turning up into that first position throughout today. So it's WC and the 12 battling for that P1 position with the 30, 30 of Maxim Smith. Uh, looks like it's just holding out in P3. That could change though throughout this. As you can see, the fog is sort of staying away from Clay at the minute. It's behind the banks. Uh, it's going to threaten us at some point, isn't it? But here are the gaps as we run through the order of today. So some news features for all of you to watch at home as uh, gives you a bit more information to what you can see. We've also got a transponder number just popping up onto the screen there as well. <laughs> but nevertheless, it is a first and second with a gap between the two of them. So coming down the main straight we come. It's the WC leading... And now has the fastest lap of a 41.20. So that is what we're getting in that these damp conditions. We've not got a dry line yet. Mainly because I think the rain is slightly there outside. But that doesn't... Uh, it's not going to stop anybody. That ain't going to stop anyone. To the blurry cam as we go to the hairpin and horseshoe. As darting down the inside near the mid grid. Uh, behind what is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh battle between once again the 30 and the 33, Maxon Smith and Reese Reed. So down the main straight we come for our leaders, and then here is the change. There's it goes to 36, 39, 84, then the 30 and 33. It looks like they swap back again. Ollie Wise moving up a position into P9 ahead of Jack West as uh, they're now into Billy's through the S as they go. As they have a little drift through the S's. The 30 and 33 have swapped once again. I think my uh, timing's updating slowly. Lots of them trying the outside line. Obviously, in the wet, there's a lot more grip there. And that is uh, a battle between the 56 and the 53. Jack Metters. Trying to have a go around the outside of the hairpin at the horseshoe on the inside. We're not sure if he manages to change position there. But as we come down and around for another lap. 1 minute 35 left on the clock. Top 10 not unchanged because... Well, it's changed even. As Ollie Wise makes another move up the order. The, eight, uh, the 56 there. Uh, trying to battle now the 33 of Reese Reed going into the hairpin. He's going down the inside of the hairpin. And it looks like Jarrett Metters might try and follow. Obviously, there's a lot more grip on the outside, so he stays back. Is there a swap between the 36, uh, 33 and the 56? And there is a change as we go around the horseshoe. You can't see it at home, but I can with my eyeballs, thanks to the blurry gam. So from the top bend down the main straight we come. And into Billy's we go. So a lot of changes early on for heat number one. We've only lost one driver, which is Izzy L in number 13. Is it Izzy Lawton, maybe? That might be it, not Lawton. Lawton. I'll figure that out as I go along. <laughs> Apologies in advance. 
as uh, Barnaby Grubb goes over the line there and our lead is coming over the line now so we're going to have our first set of uh, blue flags potentially here so through the S's down the back straight we go the 72 about to be lapped on 10 seconds left of this race so going into the hairpin we go and that driver taking the real outside line he knows is in last and staying out of the way of everybody else that is very good sportsmanship there as our front two runners go ahead and as we come ready into for our final lap of this race so last lap board is now out on the screen coming down the main straight let's go for our current leader which is joshua withcomb still has the fastest lap of this race of a one uh, 41 one four so around biddies we go through the s's down the back straights and into the hairpin we travel Charlie Cox is just a bit too far behind as it stands. Over the line, he is 1.2 seconds behind. That gap probably hovering around the second mark, going around the hairpin. As we go to the top bend and coming down the main straight. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the first win for today. Taking the checkered flag, it's Joshua Withcombe. Followed by Josh, uh, Charlie. Josh, there it is. How did that come across? Uh, Charlie Cox in second. Uh, Vlad Tominchuk in P3. Uh, then we have Jasmine Taylor fourth. Ollie Wise fifth. Billy Vaught sixth. Maxim Smith seventh. Jack West will take P8. Jarek Metters ninth. Reese Reed in tenth. And that is your top ten. Top novice. Uh, we'll be coming down the main straight now, actually. We're still waiting for those to come on through. And it will be the 76 of Max Chown who goes ahead of Ava Morris, who's uh, in her, I think it's her third, I think it's now her third appearance in the Junior Rotax. And uh, that is it. Fast lap goes to our race winner, Joshua Withcombe, with a 41 1 4. So that is the end of that race, ladies and gentlemen. We go to the Honda Cadets next, uh, which there is 13 drivers uh, this weekend. Fierce competition in the Honda Cadets. Uh, still plenty of movement possible for this grid. Um, but obviously, we're coming to 11 o'clock, which means we'll be having our minute silence in a few moments. I got carried away then. So we will be back shortly, ladies and gentlemen.
Sarah, I bet you wish you could do the next one, but we'll have it for you. I do, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is the two minute silence complete. We'll just let me run up, jump around up there. It was a lovely, lovely two minute silence. All right, let's go back to the grid then. Let's get ready to go again. Hopefully, my. Hopefully this uh, computer will sort itself out in a second. Uh, the rain has just started to fall here as well at Clay Pigeon. So as the rain comes on down. Let's go for the formation lap for the Honda Cadets. Uh, 11 drivers all together. So, I don't know if we're going to go again, but let's find out. Coming down the main straight, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we are underway for the Honda Cadets for the first race for round 10 for them. Uh, I can't actually see into Billy's either camera, so it's all a blur. But let's see who is leading the way. I think that's Nikita Roberts in third. It's the 72 of Finley Thirstfield in first. Uh, second, not sure. But uh, darting down the inside is the driver behind Nikita at the time. And that was the 15 of Luke McGall. But I think Nikita's just swapping back there, swapping positions at the moment as we go on through. So coming down the main straight, your running order on the left-hand side of the YouTube live stream. So it is... Finley Firstfield, followed by Arthur Way, Luke McGall, Nikita Roberts, Zach Ormshaw, Oliver Ratton, Alfred Matthews, Finney Ormshaw, Charlie White, then Joseph Davis, and then uh, Shaylan Sreek. <laughs> Sorry for butchering any surnames today, uh, but there it is. <laughs> so around the hairpin towards the horseshoe. Everyone just staying on track at the minute. It's the 72, the 15, then I think that was. I can't see the number there for a second. I think it was a 47 of Arthur Way. 
Uh, Nikita Roberts just holding out in that P4 position. Uh, changes on the train there for you to swap to where. Uh, Luke McGall and Arthur Way just swapping positions. As the rain is slowly clearing the screens for you all at home. Apart from that one. Uh, <laughs> So around the hairpin towards the horseshoe we go. It's side by side, touching the grass a little bit there from the 47 of Arthur Way. Uh, but we are still going strong. He is in third position now. So as we come from the top end down the main straight, our front two pulling away slightly, coming side by side down the main straight. The 15 and the 72, Luke McGall having a great start. Pings first over mine. He is the fastest driver out there on circuit. Side by side going into the S's, through the S's they go, down the back straight. And then you have the pack of fourth from third, fourth, fifth and sixth together. And so we'll see if they work together or if they will swap positions just to catch up. As Nikita Roberts goes slightly wide, just gets the invitation of Oliver Ratten in there. A little bit touch on the grass, goes after way, the 47. Nikita on the outside, the 63 of the horseshoe, but through buttons we go into the top bend and uh, it looks like Nikita Roberts has put herself back up in 2P4 and once again it's side by side action from our front two runners Luke McGall and Finney Thursfield so down the main straight Finney goes first over the line there look at that gap it's just hardly anything uh, same again at Billy's side by side those two swapping positions slowing each other down goes slightly deep into the corner of the S's puts the 72 on the back foot a little bit and a gap has formed and also it looks like the 21 of Zach Ormshaw who is up in third position has uh, invited himself to this party as well as we go into the horseshoe uh, the 21 trying to creep closer to Luke McGall Nikita Roberts just holding in there I remember rightly her parents uh, on Friday were saying that's probably her best ever practice day uh, she has had for a long time so Nikita improving more and more as we go through the year. We can see those improvements here. All ready as she is back in fourth position and defending strong. So through the S's down the back straight. The 72 now behind the 21. Uh, one of the Ormshaw brothers uh, now ahead. But impossible swap at the horseshoe. Sorry, the hairpin. Oh, I did it. So around the horseshoe we go. Someone being stupid and revving their cart like crazy. Am I actually meant to do that at Clay Pigeon? So it's Luke McGall followed by Zach Hornshaw, Finley Thursfield, Nikita Rollett, Oliver Ratton. It's really tight in that set of drivers. But Nikita's holding strong in that P4, holding off Ratten behind. Hopefully trying to make some positions up, but coming on her outside, coming out of the hairpin towards a horseshoe. The 22 taking the outside line has lost a couple of tenths there, but it stays behind Nikita Roberts. She holds on to fourth, Finney stays into third, I think that is. And Zach Ormshaw is in P2 for this race. The 15 there with a comfortable lean. Because they're 1.8 seconds over the line. So good lead there as at the S's Nikita Roberts nearly challenged for that position once again. As uh, the 22 Oliver Russell is staying right on her tail. As we go into the hairpin, Nikita goes a little bit deep into the corner, opens up that gap, and it's swap positions between the two of them. She's down into P5, but instantly back onto the 22's uh, rear, but does stay behind at the moment. So those two swap positions as we come down the main straight once again. For another lap of play position. We have 1 minute 50 left on the clock. as the changes are on your screen. 
for that position between Oliver Ratton and Nikita Roberts as uh, she has fallen slightly behind as uh, the pace of Ratton at the minute straight on the rear of Thursfield to really challenge that position and try and make a move up which has he already done it? Going around the corner, the 22, he has indeed. He's ahead of the 72 uh, going around the horseshoe. And as such, that is the order change once again. As the 15 of Luke McGall goes over the line, matching his last lap, by the way. 45-5-3 was the fastest, but is Oliver Ratton with a 45-5-2. So that changed rather quickly. And you can tell that because he is absolutely flying up the order over the last couple of laps as we still continue through this race. There's only been one contact warning that's been to uh, Lou McGall, but that was quite early on in the race a couple of minutes ago. As we come down the main straight, Luke McGall over the line there. The 22 challenging Zach Ormshaw in the 21. There's hardly any room for mistake between the two of them as he is right on his tail. 0.09 over the line. Was the gap. Positive by two tenths on his delta time. But they still challenge on into the hairpin. No time left on the clock so the next time we go over this line it will be the last lap of the race so let's see how it goes it looks like my camera is slowly warming up to evaporate the water inside of it <laughs> that's in the waterproof casing by the way <laughs> it needs a refresh so then last lap this is the last one for this race Luke McGall leading by 4.61 seconds so it is this battle for second that we need to keep an eye on. The 21 defending his heart out. Zach Ormshaw through the S's down the back straight. Nikita Roberts staying in that P5 watching this battle. Waiting for the right opportunity just like Finley Thursfield tried. Trying to go up the up, up, uh, down the inside of Ratton. But doesn't work out. He stays where he is. But coming down the main straight ladies and gentlemen. And going to take the chequered flag with a reasonable margin. It is going to be chequered flag to 1515. It's Luke McGall. Followed by Zach Hormshaw, Oliver Ratton, Finley Thursfield, uh, then Nikita Roberts, Charlie White, Arthur Way. Uh, then it's Alfred Matthews. And then Finley Hormshaw will out score Joseph Davis uh, in P10. He is our top novice as well. And then uh, Shrika, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to say Shaylin. Shaylin, the number 26, uh, comes out in 11th. I apologise for butchering any names. I am terrible at pronouncing some, as you probably all know. Right then, that is the end for the Honda Cadets for their Heat 1. We'll see them a little bit later on. And we move on to our next race on the grid, which is the Rotax Cadets. We have seven of them this time round. And Tommy Morris and Stanley Stafford will be at the front of this grid to begin with. understand why people have to rev their engine first and just did Jesus Christ there's revving and then there's just being pain out annoying right after that little rant <laughs> Yeah. 
Right, brand complete. Let's carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell I work at Clay Pigeon? Right, let's go for the formation lap then. <laughs> and let's get ready for the Rotax Cadets for their first heat tier for uh, round 10 at the finale. Let's see how this challenge is out. Despite the early rain that we had. I think it's still damp out there at the minute. So, from to the main top bend, we go of the circuit. And let's get ready for the start of the Rotax Cadets. So, as they come on down, slow and steady. And we are underway for the Rotax Cadets. A slow start, but one that isn't slow at the start and already with a re reasonable margin of a gap through the S's. Down the back straight goes the 46 of Stanley Stafford, the 29 of Jack Blackman uh, in P2. Challenge heavily already at the start of this race by the driver behind, which is now in front. So ignore that statement. <laughs> it is the 81, I think, of Marley Fisher. Well, you shall find that out very shortly as the names will be on the left-hand side of the YouTube live stream. And we shall get your positions as follows. So, coming down the main straight then. So, it's Stanley Stafford followed by Marley Fisher. Then Jack Blackman, Morgan Weston, Tommy Morris, Archie Rogers, Tyler. And then Ethan Coupland. That is your top seven and only seven out on grid. Uh, one of the smaller grids of this round. Uh, smallest is the 177s with five. Nevertheless, around the hairpin towards the horseshoe. Big gaps, but uh, not for the battle for third as it is between Jack Blackman and Weston. Those two, the 29 and 27. Believe that they have swapped positions going around the horseshoe. And then as we come down the main straight, we'll get our next change for the race. And there it is between Archie Rogers Tyler and Tommy Morris. So a little bit further down the grid this time. There's your fastest lap of this race as well. So 45-4-4. And uh, at the moment is uh, the only driver to be in the 45s, uh, which is Stanley Stafford. I just sort out a chair for myself. So the 46 over the line there. Marty Fisher second. Jack Blackman stays in third. Morgan Weston fourth. Archie Rogers Tyler fifth. Tommy Aurora sixth. And then Ethan Coupland in seventh. Still unchanged between those. So a calm and gentle race so far. Your gaps are on the timing screen for you all. Powered by alpha timing as per usual. And that's what gives you the overlays and plus some custom coding that gives you the extra bits of information on the left hand side as well. And let's see, first time we've seen it for this year. Uh, there's Possibly will be some changes over the YouTube live stream uh, over the coming months. Obviously, we've got Christmas to go through. So after today, we won't be back until March. March? February. February, everyone. <laughs> and it looks like the rain has come back in for this race. <laughs> this camera is non-stop being hit with the elements. 
but uh, your running water is still unchanged in this race. The only two together are third and fourth as they slide past each other. And the 87 now ahead of the 29. And those two have been battling for the last couple of laps. Uh, Blackman and Archie Rogers Tyler. But as of yet, still no changes otherwise apart from those two on the field. Stanley Stafford goes over the line there. Actually goes for his uh, best lap of this race so far. Uh, as we bring that onto the screen for you all, he's just set a 44.83 in these conditions. Uh, despite the rain slightly being there. Uh, putting out some quick times for the conditions. And also running out a margin of a five second gap for that lead. So Stanley Stafford setting a quick example. Early doors try and battle it through for round 10. And as you'll know, there is no championship for the Rotax Cadets. As we always get mixed results for the Rotax Cadets. Um, So we shall see how it goes anyway for the rest of this race. It is quieting down on circuit. There's some marginal gaps everywhere. And there is still 2 minutes 10 left on the clock. 44.83 is the best lap time to beat at the minute. And the running order is still unchanged as of now. So still no changes as of yet for the Rotax Cadets. Uh, all of them pretty much staying where they are. If I showed you the changes screen, um, it's blank. Uh, so yeah, that's all we have at the minute. Uh, but there are your gaps. 7.3 seconds for the leader here. And uh, still loads of time left to go for today in this race. 30 seconds plus one more lap. Stanley Stafford just sort of setting quality times, just punching in these laps here. 44.53 now. Nobody else able to get closer than that in the 44s. Uh, nobody else has actually reached the 44s on their best lap uh, at all. So Stanley, some incredible play pace early doors. We're coming up to the last lap of this race, though. So down the main straight we come. Well, we are on the last lap of this race, ladies and gentlemen. Last lap. So around Billy's, through the S's, down the back straight we go. And that is a, another lap under the belt for Stanley Stafford. Another big gap for Stanley, 9.4 seconds. And uh, that is her driver, by the way. Uh, the gap is it's not overall to the uh, to the leader. That'll be another one that I could add. 
later down the road. Uh, but nevertheless, coming down the main straight, and already there is the checkered flag. All this race, Stanley Stafford wins it, followed by Marley Fisher, Archie Rogers Tyler, Jack Blackman. Then it will be Morgan West and Tommy Morris will come down the road later on as there's a huge gap between those two. And then Ethan Coupland for the last, but not the least. on the, some of the scenes that we have on the uh, YouTube live stream. All right, let's go to the second biggest grid of round number 10, and that is the Senior Rotax. Uh, so let's see how these go. Tom Rotherham and Bertie Wellesley on the front row. Bertie! Uh, followed by Jake and Martin and Dan Milner. Ooh, that's going to be a front grid to watch out for. Keep your eyes on Bertie, everyone. Elliot Thomas, uh, fifth. Sam Mitchell, sixth. Uh, fourth row will be Jack Maven and Evie Plain. And then the last row for the top four, uh, top ten, uh, Gino Cook and Ollie Hughes. Jasmine Captain at the back. The uh, only novice. She's funny, Jasmine. She is funny. <laughs> Cameron Crockett is starting from 20th. That's somebody to watch out for, especially when uh, being, uh, what is he, te the second in the championship. <sighs> Keep an eye out on him. So just waiting for those to come on out onto the grid. Onto the track, and we should be able to get underway for this race. Who are you supporting? Let us know in the YouTube chats. JNR Carson uh, put good luck to Barney, number 72. Uh, Daniel Barton saying good luck to number 22. Uh, so some early support earlier on uh, for this race weekend. As we are here for the formation lap. Here we go. That is a swarm of carts, 20 altogether. It looks like we're missing just one. We've already got one in the grass. It's a formation lap. What you doing? <laughs> I won't name the driver. <laughs> 23. Uh, <laughs> Billy Edgecombe. Oh, Billy Edgecombe. All out by the conditions? Who knows? Let's see how this race turns out. 20 drivers in the seniors. Ooh. This can get competitive. Especially that front row. And especially keeping an eye on Cameron Crockett. Near the rear of the grid. So, coming down the main straight, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get ready to begin the first race. For the seniors, and we're going straight away. Look at these starts today. There's the one driver slow coming down the main straight. That was Tom Taylor, who is out in front. It's, it's a 48 of Bertie Wellesley. He's had a cracking start. He's got a lead. So we go down the main straight. I just see one in the background just part there. So around the horseshoe we go. It's the... 76 oh, oh. This is going to be an interesting start to this race. Running order on the left-hand side of the YouTube live stream. And coming down the main straight, it's Bertie Wellesley, followed by 76 of Sam Mitchell, Tom Rotherham, Dan Milner, Jacob Martin, Evie Pelaney, uh, Elliot Thomas, Arthur Thacker, Jack Maymer, and then Zach Fletcher. That is your top 10. So through the S's, down the back straight, it goes Bertie Wellesley. 
He is your leader at the moment. At huge threat from Sam Mitchell, who outbreaks himself, loses one. Yeah, nearly two. He only loses one position from second to third. What a lucky boy. Such late braking, skidded nearly into the tyre wall, which would have ruined his race completely. Uh, but he is up the running order. Nevertheless, coming down the main straight. And at the 42 of Tom Rotherham right on the rear of Bertie Wellesley. Into Billy's we go. Sam Mitchell in third. Like I said, very lucky not to lose that position. Or well, too many positions there. As he goes into the hairpin uh, again. Oh, that was close. He's really taken some late lunges into the hairpin. As we go around the horseshoe, the 42 trying the outside of Mr. Bertie Wellesley. But on the right hand, uh, stays. Uh, Bertie stays in front as we go to the top bend down the main straight. And around we go into Billy, taking a defensive line. Already early doors, the top four in a nice little cushion of each other through the S's and to the back straight we go this is where we see the 42 and the 76 try stuff the 42 Tom Rotherham around the outside of Bertie Wells and he going into the uh, hairpin and is now in front that's a move you don't see often but it's working in the wet here's all the changes on the screen for you guys at, uh, guys and girls at home but there is your changes, and here are the gaps that are currently from the last time we went over the line. But down the main straight we come. It's the 42, Bertie Wellesley in the 48, 76, then the 34, 37, 30, uh, 56 even, 88, 17, 25, then the 23. I'm saying numbers, not names. Because they're on your screen on the left-hand side there. And Tom Rotherham has just absolutely flown away from that Incredible start from Bertie Wellesley. He's now defending off the 76. As Sam Mitchell just slides around the outside. So much grip at the outside of the horseshoe. Slots himself up into P2. Bertie Wellesley down into P3. And now has Jacob Martin in P4. Is that a, is that a barrel art? Two, three, four. <laughs> Through the S's. Yeah, yeah, it is. Wow. Some quick carts from uh, Biral Arts so far. Uh, quick drivers as well, to be fair. But not as quick as uh, our pole man at the moment, Tom Rotherham, who's done a 40.98 last time out. And as such, uh, just showing his pace off at this current time. So down the main straight he comes. Sam Mitchell, Jacob Martin, then Bertie Wellesley, then it's Cameron Crockett. I told you to keep an eye on Cameron Crockett through this race. He has lost himself up into P5 already. Good start from him. He has Jack Maven behind with Rufus Flan, Evie Blaine, Ollie Hughes, and then Billy Edgecombe. Rounding out your top ten. have only lost one driver into the pits, which is Jamie Burt, the 51. So 19 active runners out there. Jasmine Kaplan at the back of the field, uh, pumping out 42s, high 42s, not far off the pace. Running her race at the rear, just whilst Tom Rotherham, Sam Mitchell, Jake and Marty Bertie Wellesley go over the line there. Getting you all the best lap times from the drivers. But out in front, it's chilled for the time being. It's just keeping an eye on Cameron Crockett. A lot of drivers going from the inside to the outside. A lot of them figuring out there's a lot of pace to be gained on the outside. And as such, taking those different lines to the usual. But Tom Rotherham leads away. That gap is two, uh, just <laughs> slightly over two seconds. As we continue on, Jamie Bradfield there losing uh, 
six positions in this race. As a little bit further back at the hairpin, we've got a change between two drivers. Uh, slot down the inside, which is uh, a bit different in these conditions. Uh, the 14 of Arthur Thacker there, I think just getting ahead of Rufus Flan. But there goes Tom Rotherham in that P1. 2.5 is the gap between him and Sam Mitchell. So around biddies we go. Through the S's, down the back straight we go. Bertie a little bit slower than Cameron Crockett through the S's as he slides down the inside. That was a slow overtake, but Cameron Crockett up into P4 now. Bertie Wellesley down the order into P5. Still a top five finish from Bertie. Running a strong race. There is a slight gap between him and P6. Still a minute left on the clock. Still lots of time left to come back, especially with Cameron Crockett in front. As it looks like we had a contact warning on the screen there. Let's check a look at if we have any warnings. We've had a few. They're all on the left-hand side of the YouTube live stream. The recent one being Jack Maidman uh, given a contact warning. That is the number 17 running in the seventh position at the moment. So 20 seconds. We're going to get a couple of more laps left in this race. Check out the gaps that we got here. And it is 2.4 seconds between... Uh, Bertie Wellesley and Ollie Hughes. But nevertheless, looking to the top bend of the circuit, coming down the main straight now, we go into the final lap of this race. Tom Rotherham taking the last lap board. And that is only one to go, ladies and gentlemen, for the Senior Rotax Heat number one. Best lap time is Tom Rotherham. He's now going into the hairpin. Around into the horseshoe we go. Around we go there. Around the horseshoe, through the right-hander, towards the top bend he goes. The 34 threat by Cameron Crockett a little bit further back. But coming down to take the checkered flag, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be Tom Rotherham takes the lead and the win for this one. 1 1.9 seconds. Jacob Martin, I think that was a drag race to the end. Uh, Jacob Martin third, Cameron Crockett fourth. Bertie Wellesley rounds out your top five. Ollie Hughes sixth. Uh, then Arthur Thacker 7th, Jack Maven 8th, Rufus Flan 9th, Billy Edgecombe 10th. And then your one and only novice out there for this race, Jasmine Kaplan in the number 77. As uh, she just comes down the main straights and over the line. Lovely. Well, that's the end of that race then. Uh, obviously, all the results that I, hear, uh, I say on the stream is all provisional. So make sure you check out the results page on Alpha Timing to find out the full results uh, once they have been fully published. So sticking with seniors, we go to Senior Blues next uh, for their first heat. This is uh, three rounds in a row they've been with us. This is the fourth time this year. Anthony Cleal on pole, Max Gunter in second, Jerry Foster third, Paul Alexander fourth, Harry Smithson fifth, David Wardron sixth, fourth row, David Watts, Stuart Gray, fifth row, Alex Kemp and Robin Stoddart Stones, uh, Steve Graves and Cameron Ford on the row behind in row six, uh, and then rounding out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows, uh, David Goody in 14th and Michael Bell in P13. It seems like the computer doesn't like the live track grid view. <laughs> it, it struggles to go to that page for some reason. Who knows? <laughs>
Perfect the noise a little bit. So just waiting for those to come on out. And out they come onto the grid here for the Senior Blues. The sun's slowly trying to come out today. Just notice there's a wasp <laughs> in the room. <laughs> oh no. And we are false starting to begin with by the looks of it. Let's hide the wasp, shall we? I put it under a box. <laughs> All I'm going to hear is later is. <laughs> right. With that distraction out of the way, let's get ready for the Senior Blues for their first heat of today. You're not getting stung either today. So down the main straight we come and we are underway now this time the only false start flag for this weekend and it is go for the senior blues through the s's down the back straight we go and it's the number one that leads away anthony cleal goes really deep into the hairpin it's three wide on the exit two wide going into the horseshoe as the 66 taking a really wide line there. The 64 there of Alex Kemp just coming out a bit late. It's going to be a bit more of a practice session for him. As uh, he is miles away from the rest of our grid. Speaking of the grid, here they come. And here's your order on the left-hand side of the YouTube live stream for you all. It's Jerry Foster followed by Max Gunter, Anthony Cleo, Paul Alexander, David Watts, Harry Smeston, Robert Stoddart Stone, Stuart Gray, David Waldron, then Kevin Ford. So we've had a few battles so far in this race. A couple of changes on the running order, which is on the left-hand side of the screen. But it's Jerry Foster that's leading the way at the minute. So we've got Alex Kemp, who came out a bit later than everybody else down at the back of the field. 
But your gap between Joey Foster and Anthony Cleal at the moment is 1.73. Uh, just a reminder, all the gaps on the YouTube live stream are per driver. So from second to third, third to fourth, fifth to sixth, etc. Uh, that is the changes that we, uh, the gaps that we have on this live stream and accessible to us all. Uh, one of the many features that we will be slowly rolling into next year's live stream. 2024 season, which I believe Formula Blue might be joining again. We're following suit, but uh, we shall find that out. We've got loads of news to follow out through uh, December and January. Don't know if I'm ready for another season just yet because this one is still flying through. Four minutes 47 left on the clock. Joe Foster leads the way and has the best lap time of a 45.27. Slowly catching up to the 64 of Alex Kemp at the back of our grid. Uh, Joey Foster with some quick times in the 45 uh, region, just like the rest of our f uh, top four, all in the 45s for time-wise. And there's just as the overlay changes... Uh, Joey Foster sets the fastest lap of this race of 45.07. Is the track drying up or is Alec, uh, or is Joey Foster just with some real quick pace here today? Anthony Cleal 2.32 behind. So scrolling through, David Watts now has a faster lap of 44.81. Two minutes 52 left on the clock. So Joe Foster going over for seven laps. Just been informed there is no lunch break today. So 64 getting away out of as uh, out of the way of our leader Jerry Foster, who's uh, eventually lapped the 64. Uh, but nevertheless, still one minute 14 left on the clock here. So much time left on this race to go. Not much changes have been going on. The gaps have been. Relatively big. The only one is between Robert Stoddart Stones and Paul Alexander. The third and fourth running drivers as they go through the S's. Smithson is somewhat slowly catching up with those two, but otherwise 
Not too much change that has been going on. David Watts still holds the Farris's lap as well of a 44.58. Thirty seconds left. Still no changes on the screens. Paul Alexander right on the rear now of Stoddart Stones. There could possibly be a change within these last two laps. So around the horseshoe, through to the right hand it goes. I think that was the number one. But coming down the main straight is currently our leader, which is the 66 Jerry Foster for the last lap of this race. The board is out. So let's see how this turns out. Still no changes on the grid. As we are still going through, David Watts holds that fast as lap still. So no changes in that sense, but let's keep an eye on our lead driver, the 66, as he goes around our, four, I think that's the 48 of David Goody, who spun out the horseshoe. Uh, but nevertheless, coming down the main straight, ladies and gentlemen. And taking the checkered flag. That is Joey Foster who takes the checkered flag for the win for the Senior Blues for heat number one. Two lap drivers in this, David Goody and Alex Kemp over the line, Robert Stoddard Stones around out in top three, Paul Alexander fourth, Harry Smithson fifth, David Watts sixth, and keeps that fastest lap as well. Kevin Ford uh, eighth, Max Gunter ninth, Steve Groves will round out your top 10. And that is the end of that race. And there's that fast lap once again from David Watts. About 44.51. A quick time from the driver. As we return back to the grid. And it goes for the 177 the race. Uh, one <laughs> I can't speak. Uh, for the 177s and 177 Masters. This ceiling has got thinner, but I can hear the conversation downstairs. <laughs> right, here we go then, ladies and gentlemen, for the formation lap for the 177 and 177 Masters. Five drivers all together. So from the right hander towards the top bend we go and we get ready to begin at the start of this race for the 177 and 177 Masters. Five drivers all together, three, uh, two Masters and three Normals. Nice and slow down the main straight. But it's that formal. We go straight away for the start of this race. So we go around Billy's 
Shooting down the inside goes not one but two drivers as they squeeze uh, squeeze Ben Johnson off a little bit into the curb. Uh, but there's the change. Patrick williams Rahag also trying to go down the inside of Ben Johnson but doesn't get the full open gap, so he has to back out. Uh, nevertheless, it's Ian Branfield, I think, at the front. And is it Harrison Crook in P2? I believe it is. Well, let's find out, shall we, on the left-hand side of the screen. Ian Branfield, Harrison Crook, Ben Johnson, Patrick williams Rahag, and Jason Bear. That is the start for this race. As uh, Ian Branfield and Harrison Crook just fly on down. Well, when I say fly on down, down the inside. Harrison Crook up into P2. One, but back down to P2 as the exit wasn't very good for him. Ian Branford with the better traction on the circuit and uh, does maintain that P1. So it's going to be a fight between these two once again, as it usually is in most times. And uh, down the main straight we come for the end of lap one. Six minutes 28 left on the clock. And uh, this race has yet to unfold out, and still a load of time left to go.
So then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Clay Vision Cart Club Championships round number 10. We're back with the rest of the 177 and round 77 Rotax. He won. Not many changes on the grid. Uh, Patrick williams Rahag has put himself up into the top three, uh, but there has been no other changes on the grid as of this so far. Track Mike's back on. Uh, so 42.01 is the fastest lap time there. That's my overlay. Oh, because I got the other overlay on. That's why that's broken. Uh, so 30 seconds remain of this race. And uh, <laughs> the foggy mi uh, camera is slowly, slowly going through and clearing itself up. Very slowly. But it's been between Ian Branfield and Harrison Crook whilst I've been watching on. Uh, 42.01 is the fastest lap time from Ian Brownfield, but still not enough to shake off uh, Harrison Crook. I don't think anybody can hold off Harrison Crook as long as Ian Brownfield can do, as those two have just swapped at the hairpin, and uh, Harrison Crook trying to park it on the exit of the hairpin. I think it's slightly worked for him as uh, Ian Brownfield trying to take an uh, outside line. On the last few laps here. So the last lap board is out nice and early. Ready to go. So down the main straight we come for the last lap of this race. And there it is. There is the change between the two of them. And a gap of 0 0.27. Hardly anything between those two. As all the new track uh, alpha stuff. On the screen there for all of you to watch. As Ian Brownfield goes a little bit slow out the hairpin there. I just noticed. Corner of my eye. So coming down the main straight then. And going to be taking the checkered flag. It's going to be. After a long defended race. Harrison Crook. Followed by Ian Brownfield in P2. Patrick williams Rahag will take P3. And Ben Johnson will take fourth. And Jason Bear at the back in P5. Just listening to myself. <laughs> Do that a lot. I talk to myself a lot as well. Mainly on the second weekends of every month. Right then, let's go to the grid then. We're back to the start once again. It's a junior Rotax this time for their second heat. I better stand up for this one. So it's Danny May Reed on pole alongside Jarek Metters, Emily Cotty second, Alice Snow fourth, Reese Reed. Fifth, Jack West sixth. I couldn't count then for a second. For a whole second, I couldn't count. Uh, but that is your order there. Ava Morris in the top ten to begin with. And out come the drivers onto the track. A relatively large grid with uh, these 20 drivers so second biggest of today or is it or is it matched with the seniors i can't remember <laughs> i actually can't remember it's a big grid nevertheless finn smith they're uh, coming out a bit uh, sorry finn smith lucas how they got the same number but they're in different classes sorry sorry lucas so as they start getting themselves ready uh, a few other drivers coming out a bit late as well. Billy Vaught, so this is the biggest grid that we have this year. Uh, uh, this year? This round? God, what am I saying? Uh, it will be a false start to begin with. It's already been put out onto the uh, screens and onto the timing uh, digiboard. So they will come on down to just go back round again to try and let a couple of these drivers get into position and to get themselves ready to go. 
See if Billy Vaught would be able to catch up to the rest of the grid. I love this camera angle because you can see the uh, you can see the digiboard slightly anyway. And grid changes. <laughs> There's a bit too many there. <laughs> So around they come nice and slowly around the horseshoe. A couple of drivers still trying to get back into position as they should be. Working it out amongst themselves. I left the heater on here too long. I've gone from it's nice and cool to it's too hot. So, oh, it's gone quiet. Uh, coming down the main straight then, and this time we are going to be underway for the first lap of heat number two. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that one. So around uh, Billy's we go. The 45 of Eddie Stewart as well coming onto the grid. Yellow flags down at Billy's with a few spinners. Who is out on fr in front of the grid to begin with? And it is a slight battle, but it is, I think that's the 68 of Danny May Reed. Somebody else has gone around or outside and just slotted themselves in front. Well, instead of guessing, let's give you the full stuff. So on the left-hand side of the YouTube live stream is your running order for this race. And it's going to be uh, the 92 of Jack West, followed by Danny May Reed, Derek Metters, Reese Reed, Ellis Snow, Emily Cotty, Vlad Tomanchuk, Maxim Smith, Ollie Wise, and then Ethan Griffiths. That is your top 10. And Carthy Kometa has already popped himself into the pits. Unfortunately, that is the end of his race there for heat number two. Not a great start. Still got two other races left to go for his day, though. And loads of time before we get going. There's another driver going slow around the hairpin. Looks like might possibly retiring. So there's a little bit of debris out on the hairpin. Good spot there from our trap maintenance, uh, which is Ryan Hodge once again. Absolute legend. So if you see a yellow blob running around the place because uh, of my camera angles, uh, that's who it is. Uh, someone's taken, uh, uh, I think it's a sticker. Right, instead of commentating about, uh, <laughs> about a sticker on the track, uh, let's go ahead and give you the further changes in this race here. The fastest lap is Jack West, who is leading this race at the moment, a 41.39. But here is the further changes. So it's Jarek Metters, Danny May Reed, Reese Reed, and Emily Cotty, Ollie Wise, Ellis Snow, Vlad Top and Track, Maxim Smith, Philly Vaught, your top 10. Reese Reed on the wrong side of the uh, sausage curve. That's trucked him off a little bit. But it's such a tight pack from third below. 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th. You pretty much got from 2nd to 14th all within a couple of corners of each other. Uh, hardly anything at all between any of these. Look at them come down the main straight here. That is crazy. Here's the gaps for them all in their relative spots. Uh, that's how tight it is. It's a second... <laughs> It's, it's, it's hardly anything. It's great to see. Uh, so keeping an eye on that tight pack. Lots of them going around the outside of one another. One touching a wheel onto the grass. I imagine to sneak on through the WC. Taking the outside line. As we've seen already in a couple of previous races. is a strong position to be in. If you can get the exit correct. Uh, in this case it wasn't. As it was slightly locked out. And that was with the WC down in 10th position. Still loads more changes coming through this grid order. It is action-packed in the middle. We've got a driver going slow in that mid-pack. Possibly gone wide, though. And is travelling down. It's a 39 uh, 
of Billy Vaught. So not a successful exit of the yeses, did, uh, of Billy, sorry. And uh, straight back onto the rear of the WC, though. So Joshua Withcombe is in ninth. Or is he? <laughs> we shall find out. So Jarek Metters, Ollie Wise. There's a 4.4 second gap uh, ready to go as the rain once again is back with us. It is drizzle. It is drizzling. There is the weather app on the top right of the screen for you all there. When it reloads, there it is. So it's only saying cloudy at the minute. But it is just spitting ever so slightly. It's never it's never a dry race at clay. So I see how much this affects the race. Uh, obviously, best lap is still with a 41.29. So I see how much that drops off. <clears throat> As a little bit of rain up here does affect the track quite a little bit. Quite a little bit, quite a lot. Is the words I should be saying. Uh, so, Ollie Wise still on the rear of Jarek Metters at the moment. Trying to battle that one out. The 30 going a little bit wide of the horseshoe. Uh, just trying to defend off, I think that was Jasmine Taylor. That uh, he was overtaking. Couple of more messages on the alpha timing for warnings. Couple of contact warnings given in this race so far. Billy Fort being one of them. And also Jarek Mets as well. So I can just about read it on the screen. There we go. Certainly was lost one drive in this race so far, and it was Carl Thiek and Kumeta, unfortunately, at the start. Ollie Wise just given a contact warning there, just on the right side of the, of the information screen. 6.06 .06 is the gap between first and second. I'm guessing those two were battling a little bit further more. Jared Meta's down into third. Emily Cotty... Stays in fourth. She's in a comfortable fourth at the minute. Uh, Jack Philpott saying good luck to DM Racing and Charlie Cox. Jack West just going over the line there. As Jarek Metters gets another contact warning. Ollie Wise was another one with that contact warning a little bit earlier on. Fastest lap is still with Jack West. The pace has dropped off ever so slightly. That rain was not in for long. There's still a, there's a slight drizzle, but not much to be worrying about as we look over at the hairpin there. On the exit, the 28, he's sticking a wheel onto the grass, got a little bit loose, but stays ahead of the WC. And I think the 91 was in that as well. Not entirely sure there. As we come down the main straight, we have a mechanical flag for Jasmine Taylor, the number 10. The first mechanical flag of this one. We've got a retiree down at the hairpin. So much going on in the last few moments. That's Lucas Howell, the number 19. That is out of this race right near the end as well because it's the last lap now. Uh, Jack West with a reasonable gap. 6.5 seconds is his lead. And that's really just showing you the pace of Jack West early doors in the second lots of racing here. So 92 going around the horseshoe. Second position just entering the horseshoe now. That just gives you a 
audible representation of what the order is, or what the gap is. But coming down the main straight, taking the checkered flag, and it's going to be Jack West who takes the checkered flag for race number two, heat two for the Junior Road Tax, race number seven in our running order today. Oh, he's still got loads of time left to go. Ollie Wise in second. Jarek Metters third. Emily Cotty fourth. Danny May Reed fifth. Maxim Smith sixth. Joshua Withcom seventh. Reese Reed eighth. Jasmine Taylor ninth. And then Ella Snow rounds out your top ten. Top novice is Max Chown, the number 76. So then as all these carts go on into the grid, uh, into the grid, into the pit lane. Uh, let's get ready for the Honda Cadets for their second heat. Zach Holmshaw and Charlie White are on the front row. Devin Gills and Nikita Roberts on row two. Nikita with another high start in these heats. Uh, Ethan Cousins and Oliver Ratton on third row. Uh, Alfred Matthews on Arthur and Arthur Way on the fourth row. Finley Armshaw and Finley Thirstfield. The two Finleys, one with two ends, one with a single end. On row number five. Is this one going to lag again? <gasps> it didn't. I found the culprit of what was uh, making it not do its stuff properly. Yay! Right, uh, yeah, I can finally use this uh, view. In it's sort of got a little ring, like U shape, on the live stream. Yeah. I didn't want to come in early today. I wanted to lay in. <laughs> so, just waiting for one recovery here. Let's plow on the other music. Yep. Just hear the rain tapping the roof. It's heavy in the sense it's heavy, but it's not a lot of it. Heavy light rain, if that makes that doesn't make sense. Waiting really. I should, put some, I should put elevator music on the brakes. <laughs> really joking, cut the music. Let's go for the formation lap <laughs> for the Honda Cadets. As uh, Mr. Roberts pops out onto track. And so you can do as a cadet dad. Uh, you can head out onto circuit in the middle. So from the top bend down the main straight, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to kick start off. 
race number eight. Heat number two for the Honda Cadets. Negative. It is a false start. Don't get your hopes up, people. <laughs> no, it's a false start. So they're gridding themselves up very quickly once again around the horseshoe and towards the right hander. And it is this time, yay! Let's go for heat number two for the Honda Cadets for round number 10. So down the back straight we go. Round the hairpin towards the horseshoe. Very strong in that midfield pack. But towards the top bend we go. Your running order on the left-hand side of the YouTube live stream as per usual. And let's get underway for your standing for this one. So it's Zach Ormshaw followed by Charlie White, Alfred Matthews, Nikita Roberts, uh, Luke McGall, Oliver Ratton, Arthur Way, Finley Thurstill, then Finley Ormshaw. see someone's reflection <laughs> as I look out on the track so I'll just put the blind down so Nikita Roberts charging up towards the top bend here as we go down the main straight uh, she's now running back up into P5 so there is the change there for you all on the screen the top four very close with each other 21, uh, then the 12. And uh, that's, the, that's Charlie White in second position. Uh, holding off Alfred Matthews. So around the horseshoe they go. Peter Roberts trying to catch up to the driver in front of her in the orange. I couldn't catch the number. Best lap time there on the screen as well by Luke McGall in car number 15. He's running up in P3. A massive change on the grid there. There's a couple of drivers moving around, swapping positions. And speaking of swapping positions, through the S's we go. The 15 now ahead of the 12, ahead of Charlie White. But Alfred Matthews on the other side of Charlie as they go into the hairpin. And it looks like... Oliver Ratton trying to stick in to one of the gaps that was formed. Stays in P5. Nikita Roberts has a perfect view of this one in P6. So that just shows you how close those drivers are there. They're very tight. Two by two by two. Hurrah, hurrah. So we go from the top bend down the main straight. Looking to the left, looking to the right. Doesn't happen at the moment. No cha-cha sliding around here. So we go through the top bend. It was three wide for a brief moment. Two wide into the S's. Nikita Roberts getting involved in this one. Sliding herself up into P5. As she gets ahead of... Oh, I think that was Oliver Ratton. But that could change still as we go around the hairpin towards the horseshoe. As uh, Luke McGall is starting to break away with uh, Zach Ormshaw is also trying to break away from this as well. So it's a battle for P3. Nikita Roberts with a perfect view of this one. And it looks like she might be back down in P6 again. So battling away those two. as She's side by side coming down the main straight. Into Billy's we go. She's on the inside line. Tucks in nicely in front. 
goes wide though on the exit, so it's just a quick magical swap between the two of those and back to how it was the 72 of Finney Thursfield slowly catching this as well. The gaps on the screen as well there for you. I think it's rather close in that pack. 0.02 between Nikita and Charlie. White in that one. Wowzers. So, down the main straight then. I think McCall just having a quick look behind to see how much of a gap he has. Well, you, you have a 1.6 a second gap so far in this race. And no changes to the running order as we go through the S's down the back straight. Still three minutes left on the clock. Side by side coming into the horseshoe between the 21 and 22. Zach Ormshaw and Oliver Ratton. So from the top bend, down the main straight we come. As we go through the S's, which is just a mere blur on the stream, as uh, someone's not happy at the back behind the keys. Roberts, they're not sure what's gone on. So the 21 from third position down behind the keys, so down into sixth. There was a hand raised by him, so he was not happy. But as you do in racing, and you should do in racing, is uh, just keep it behind you. Carry on and get on with the race. There's the change there. Down at Zach Homshaw, down to P6. As he is trying to catch back up with Nikita Roberts and Charlie White. So around the hairpin we go, towards the horseshoe. One minute of 13 left to go. Your fastest lap on the screen for you all there. Luke McGall going over the line. That is the one with the fastest lap, but it's a battle between the 27, 22, 12. It's side by side for Arthur Way and Finley Thursfield. A little battle going at the back of the pack there in P7. Side by side through the S's, the 27 and 22. Hello. Those two... Uh, Really giving each other a lot of racing room. Some great racing between those two at the front there. Charlie White just behind it all. Just to keep an eye on what's going on. Nikita Roberts just being able to stick within that margin. 25 seconds remain. As the leader goes over the line. For... Another lap of this race. So we're leading on to the last few laps left on this race. And it is Luke McGall that leads it by 4.06 seconds. That is the gap that we have. And it's that battle for P2 which is helping, helping that gap be even bigger. Obviously, the more you battle, the more time you're going to lose to your leader. But all of these really battling on. Nikita Roberts staying on the outside. So she has the inside for the right-hander. As we come down the main straight, McGall takes the last lap board. As he also sets the fastest lap of this race as well. Her 45.29, so improving on the one he already set. A gap of 4.98 seconds. Through the S as we go. Uh, Nikki Roberts has lost a position once again to Zach Ormshaw, so those two have battled through, but Nikki has dropped back a fair bit, so that could be the end of that little battle there. But into the horseshoe we go. Around goes the 27. P7. 
who is really tightly leading that pack for the minute. But for a brief moment, we'll head over to our winner for this race. It is going to be Luke McGall who takes the check of flag. And then it's going to be Drag Race Scalor. But it's Alfred Matthews followed by Oliver Ratton, Charlie White, Zach Ormshaw, Nikita Roberts for your top six. Finley Thursfield, seventh, Arthur Way, eighth. Finley Ormshaw, ninth. And then your top ten uh, is Shaylen uh, in the number 26, who is also our top novice. Not forgetting Joseph and Davis and Towns uh, down in 11th position. So as they all head on into the grid, we go to the other cadet fleet of the club championships, and that is the Rotax kind. Uh, obviously, they were brand new for 2023. Morgan Weston and Ethan Coupland on the front row for this race. So let's go to the formation lap then. Cut the music, maestro! And uh, <laughs> do the opposite. Uh, and uh, let's get ready for this top seven race. <laughs> top seven, meaning all seven. Seven Rotax Cadet drivers as the weather once again changes. These next eight minutes will be crucial for these. I'm just here behind me. Here we go, here we go. Right, top end then. And it is a full start. At least I can get used to the conditions that are now changing out on the grid. I don't understand why you have to rev it that stupidly loud. Just no need for it, man. Second rant of the day. <laughs> and we're going for another false start. It'll do it. Alright, so we're going back round again. Alex's rant about revving. <laughs> oh dear. And well, we're underway third time's the charm for this race. Let's walk you through the first lap here. So around Billy's through the S's. 
and down the back straight we go. So a few swaps have been going on through this lap here. If we show you the running order on the left-hand side of the YouTube live stream. Down the main straight we come. And here's your running order. Marley Fisher, Stanley Stafford, Archie Rogers, Tyler Morgan Weston, Ethan Cooper, Jack Blackman, then Tommy Morris. That is your top seven for this race. Uh, meanwhile, on the YouTube live stream side of things, we're going to be taking a short break and we'll be back for the rest of the race very shortly.
So then, ladies and gentlemen, let's cut the music. And uh, we are back for the rest of the Rotax Cadet Heat 2 race. On the way back from the building, I heard someone say, Come on, Jack! So some uh, support up here for Jack Blackman, who's currently running in P4. Uh, but Stanley Stafford's leading the way by 2.2 seconds to Archie Rogers Tyler in second, Marley Fisher in third, Jack Blackman, like I said, in P4. Uh, Morgan Weston in P5. And Ethan Coupland in P6. Jack Mac Blackman is actually having a bit of a drive here to defend that P4 ever so slightly. Tommy Morris at the back of the grid. The weather has changed quite a bit up here. It's starting to rain a lot now. As the weather graphic also just backs me up on that one. So the weather conditions ever changing up here. You can just tell by the lovely grey clouds. <laughs> just another day in paradise. So the clock has uh, gone down to zero, which also means that this is the last lap of this race. Stanley Stafford will be the one that takes this. As that is the gap. 2.35 seconds is your gap. Uh, it says one lap for Jack Blackman, but that is just because they haven't gone over the line just yet. And also your best lap is a 44.57 set by our leader for this race, Stanley Stafford. Out in front as the uh, camera has slowly dissolved the residue that was originally in it from earlier. It does slowly clear up, that camera. <laughs> By the last race today, it'll be clear. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, coming down to take the checkered flag. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> it's uh, Stanley Stafford who takes the checkered flag for heat number two for the Rotex Cadet, followed by Archie Rogers Tyler. Marty Fisher in P3. And then we have Jack Blackman, fourth, Morgan Weston, fifth, Ethan Couplin in sixth, Tommy Morris, seventh. And that is your race ended there. So that's it for the Rotax Cadets. And we move on to our next grid now, uh, which is the Senior Rotax, uh, one of our second biggest grid of today. I believe it was 20 drivers, but it could be 21. So big grid. Lots of competition once again. Zach Fletcher and Jamie Bradfield on the front row with Ollie Hughes and Arthur Thack on the second row. Daniel Beards and Evie Pallane on row three. That's your top six. Then Finn Smith, Billy Edge come on row four. Then Tom Taylor and Cameron Crockett will be on the top ten. And the fifth and final row. So the formation lap then for this one, it's not Rotax Cadet Heat 2, it's Senior Rotax for Heat number 2. So as they go around for their formation lap, let's see how this one plays out. Bertie Wellesley will be starting from the rear of the grid this time round. Thought he managed to blow up his engine then, Revan. <laughs> and it's a full start to begin with.
Right then, so we try again for the second time around. So from the top end, down the main straight. And by the looks of it, another false start for this race. So, uh, not to jinx anything, but third time's a charm. It looks like we've got a retiree as well. As our track maintenance, Ryan Hodge goes to help that driver that is stranded there, unfortunately. Might be... Right, it's, it's a bit of deja vu. <laughs> let's go again. <laughs> right, top bend, ladies and gentlemen, and let's get ready. Hopefully, maybe this time. It is this time. Let's get ready for the heat number two for the senior race. Let's go in third time this time. And uh, it. Oh, and it's been full started. How's he able to write on a notepad when it's absolutely dumping it down with rain? <laughs> My observation of the day. How is he writing on paper in the wet? <laughs> okay, this time it is. <laughs> Let's go <laughs> for the next eight minutes for the senior Rotax heat number two through the S's side by side for a lot of drivers here so around the horseshoe it's the 66 that leads the way so I think that's a 14 in second So down the main straight we come, and here's your running order. It's Jamie Bradfield, followed by Arthur Thacker, Billy Edgecombe, Cameron Crockett, Zach Fletcher, Daniel Beards, Ollie Hughes, Elliot Thomas uh, in P8, Rufus Flan, ninth, and then Finn Smith rounds out your top ten. Uh, Bertie Wellesley rounds into P15. That's near the back of the grid. It'll be battling up the field as we go along this race here. Uh, Zach Fletcher is uh, pitted from P5. That chucks everybody up the order slightly there. Uh, so it goes Arthur Thacker leads the way to Jamie Bradfield, Cameron Crockett, Billy Edgecombe, and then Ollie Hughes. That's now your top five. Uh, two retirees so far. One that, that it won't show on the screen. And then one a little bit later. Daniel Beard's given a contact warning. As you can tell by the disco effect on this camera. <laughs> so down the main straight we come. There goes Arthur Thacker there. There's all the gaps to one another on the field. Uh, Arthur Thacker, Cameron Crockett, Jamie Bradfield. That's now your top three. Yeah, Cameron Crockett was speeding along through. In fact, the fastest lap as well from him. So we go around the hairpin towards the horseshoe. 
Uh, third possession, ja Jamie Bradfield. Side by side between Billy Edgecombe and Ollie Hughes. The 23 and the 11. Tight pack. I think the 37 or maybe the 17 was in that bunch as well. But uh, we shall let you know very shortly. So there's the contact warning of uh, Daniel Beards on the screen. And the timing screen giving us the fastest lap as well. Once again, 41.01, this time to Arthur Thacker out in front. There's a 1.35 gap for the lead between those two. And 1.9 between Jamie Bradfield and Cameron Crockett. So keep flying on round the 19 of Finn Smith right at the back of the pack is unusual for his rounds around here. Is this a heat for him to write off or is he going to be able to climb up the order slightly? He does this time round. Jasmine Kaplan out the back in P19. But nevertheless, around the hairpin we go. A little bit of a tap up the rear from the 25 on the 23. So we've slammed on Billy Edgecombe. Uh, Billy Edgecombe given a contact warning as well. Just noticing on the uh, YouTube live stream overlays. Still lots of changes going on. Arthur Thacker with the fastest lap of a 40.89. Is it going to be able to be enough to beat Cameron Crockett? The gap is at 1.9. Jamie Bradfield with a 3.6 second gap between him and second. And then that third position battle is just yet to go underway. As the third position driver spins on the exit of the right hander just as we speak about it. Jamie Bradfield spun and well, uh, that's his race over. He's out of his cart, slapping the tyre, slapping his cart tyre, sorry, kicking the cart tyre. He's not happy, and it looks like that might be the end of his race. Well, it definitely is if he does get going again, but he's given up and walking away from the cart. Oh, no. I would be frustrated as well, to be fair. Oh, gloves are flying on the floor. He's not happy, bunny. So, 2.26 left on the clock. It goes Arthur Thacker, Cameron Crockett, then Ollie Hughes in a turn of events. That was a 66 of Jamie Bradfield, indicated by the big red out on your screen for the temporary time there. Looks like they might be trying to get him going again. Still yellow flags on the right-hander, which is going to neutralise the race slightly there, especially for this battle where Billy Edgecombe is. The 23 and the 17. Finishing the move under the yellow flag. But still 1 minute 40 to go. Best lap time goes to Arthur Thacker, still out in front. As we lose another driver, the 78 of Tom Taylor has just popped into the pits. Promotes Jasmine Kaplan up into P17 now. Not too many other changes yet at the moment, though. So between Rufus Van and Sam Mitchell is 0 0.13. There's some big gaps for that P10 battle as well. Uh, we'll be able to see it oh, as the rain is affecting this camera angle. But through the S's, down the back straight, leading that one is the 17. Bertie Wellesley's in that pack as well. Jack Maybank giving a contact warning as 
an additional thing to add to this one. Bertie trying to go for take. Tom Rotherham right on the rear of Bertie Wellesley as well. Two contact warnings. Jack Raven and Vinny Edgecombe also giving a contact warning out there. So there's a few warnings out on the screens. As uh, we'll pop the full message board up on the screen as well for you all, all watching at home. So the rain is still coming down here at Clay Pigeon Raceway. Four seconds left on the clock for this heat. So let's try and track down where our leader has gone. <laughs> That's where I lose the leader a little bit. But coming down the main straight, and it's the 14 of Arthur Thacker. He's now taking the last lap. Frank Dart saying, unlucky James, number, Jamie, number 66, keep going. Still two other races to go. And I believe as we come down the main straight here and we'll be taking the checker flag. It's going to be Arthur Thacker followed by Cameron Crockett. Ollie Hughes will take P3. Elliot Thomas fourth. Jamie Burt fifth. Then the rest of the field, Rufus Flan 6th, Sam Mitchell 7th, Jack Mayman 8th, Bertie Wellesley 9th, Tom Rotherham 10th. That is your top 10. Jasmine Captain will be your top and only novice for that race. Best lap time goes to Arthur Thacker with a 40.79. So... Just like I said last time, from one senior to another senior grid, it's the Senior Blues for their second heat. Just waiting for those to get out onto the grid shortly. Uh, back with the Senior Blues once again. Oh, didn't realise we were waiting for a recovery. <laughs> Getting carried away. Yeah, there we go. Okay, then, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for the Formula Blues, the Senior Blues, for their second heat today. Uh, 13 drivers all together.
number 22 saying, I want to rewind, see how close I was with Charlie White and me in Cadets. Uh, you can have a look back uh, after the live event has finished. Um, there are other reasons why there is no rewind feature on the YouTube live streams. Anyway, let's get into this race and coming down the main straight. And we are underway for the Senior Blues for heat number two. So around the top bend we go through the S's. And down the back straight we go. So around the hairpin towards the horseshoe. From the right hander and then towards the top bend we go. So running order on the left hand side of the YouTube live stream as per usual. Down the main straight comes our current leader for this race which is the number three of Harry Smithson. Followed by Michael Bell, Kevin Ford, Anthony Cleal, Paul Alexander, Jerry Foster, Stuart Gray, uh, then David Watts, Max Gunter and then David Waldron is your top ten. So down the main straight we come and it looks like the number one of Anthony Khalil trying to look for the outside of the number two as the rain just continues to fall here at Clay Pigeon Raceway. Not as bad as round one last year, um, <laughs> but it is not stopping these guys driving on through this race so far. A couple of changes on the grid. Just a few, as uh, we've got a little spinner down at the hairpin, uh, but lots of battles going on as the four there. Paul Alexander getting a bit wonky coming out of the horseshoe. But it looks like it's going to be this lineup for the minute. Harry Smith, then followed by Anthony Cleal, Michael Bell. Uh, then Joey Foster in P4. Kevin Ford 5th, David Watts 6th, Paul Alexander 7th. As I can feel the temperature drop inside of this room. <laughs> I have turned my heater off mind though. So it is a battle for realistically P4 here going into the horseshoe as the number 4 down the inside of the 19 to swap positions between those two. So Paul Alexander up a position there. Uh, lots of changes on that grid though. As we come down the main straight. And the fastest goes to Joey Foster, the number 66. Starting to catch up with our front two runners, the number three and the number one. As we go into the hairpin which I've called the horseshoe many times. And then the horseshoe, which I've called the hairpin many times, as the three trying to take a wider line around the horseshoe. The 66, Joey Foster just using that outside line, pushing the power down and just keeping the same gap, if not even closer to the front two runners. An incredible line through there. And as we come down the main straights, improves his lap time as well. So some quick, smart moves from the 66. Speaking of him, the number one having to defend going through the S's. From the left to the right, he goes down the inside at the hairpin. And just like that, up into P2 goes Jerry Foster. Nearly a switcheroo, but look at him go. He's using that outside line just to keep the grip. That's where all the rubber is laying down. The number two following, but tries the outside. The 19 goes wide, and unfortunately... 
is a tangle between the two. And, uh, well, the number two, not faring out well there. Unfortunate. Great move from Michael Bell. Uh, just at the 19 of Kevin Ford. Not having enough traction going wide. And, unfortunately, a little tap has affected that. Meanwhile, at the front of the grid, the top four now together. Harry Smithson, Joe Foster, Anthony Cleal, and... David Watts, if I remember rightly, last time out, he was the fastest out on circuit. He is currently the fastest out on the circuit at the moment, too, with a 45.54. As a 66, Joey Foster tries that outside move again. This time touches the grass, slows him right down, and he's down to P4. So all that work he did earlier on has just been unwritten, and he's back down to P4. But with the pace that he's got at the moment, that could change. So here are the changes now on the screen for you all. And we'll keep an eye on this top four because Joey Foster going around, around the outside are quite enjoying these moves being made by him. So down the back straight we go. David Watts on the rear of Anthony Cleal and stays on the rear as we go into the hairpin. But Joey Foster, two laps, two mistakes, get, gets a bit too late on the brakes, goes down the inside. Taps the rear of the zero, but spins himself out and is now behind Paul Alexander, losing a lot of time. Oh, dear. Joey Foster not having a good couple of laps here. Will he be able to bounce back? 1 minute 48 left on the clock. Let's see how this plays out. A bit less pressure for the top three, though. As down the inside goes the number one, following through David Watts as well. But Harry Smithson just threaded himself through the middle again. They haven't moved a position at all, either three of them. So trying again. David Watts down the inside. Down the inside of one. Not behind. There's three, though. And there is no change from the first. Ooh, he's trying something there. But there is a change between Anthony Cleal and David Watts, is what I was meant to say originally. As they come on through, that was the gaps last time out. Let's check this gap once again between one another. And it's two tenths. That doesn't look like two tenths. Joey Foster back on a recovery dro drive. Got a hiccup out of nowhere. As he's trying to catch up with our front runners. Paul Alexander giving a bit of a battle to that. 39 seconds remain, which is only this plus another on the course of laps. As the number one down the inside of the zero, as he's gone really wide to try and get that traction. As uh, Joe Foster has pr proven to us a couple of times, if you get it right, is he going to be able to catch up though? 18 seconds, re seconds remain on this clock, but that means there is not only the last lap but we got an, another additional lap on top of this so around we go for the penultimate around Billy's Joe Foster is 1.9 seconds behind third position but they are slow going on three so into the hairpin we go and now towards the horseshoe Anthony Cleal looking for the inside line. Taps the three. Stays behind for the minute as those two touch a little bit. David Watts, I think, trying to tangle for position as well. As we go towards the top bends, just going to bring Joey Foster back into this battle. Keeping an eye on this gap now. So down the main straight we go. Last lap of this race. Here's the gaps between all of them. This is between one another. Let's see how this plays out. So, last lap through the S's. Down the back straight we go. And as we go down the back straight, we just look at the hairpin. One retiree, unfortunately, in this race. Especially with uh, just this last lap. It's a shame as well. But through the horseshoe we go. And the number three of Harry Smithson just holding in there. The 66 of D Joey Foster has caught back up to the back of this pack. But is he going to be able to have a sprint down to the end? to take back his original position. Who knows, as we come down the main straight though, and gonna be taking the checker flag. It's gonna be close, Ooh. but it will be Harry Smithson that takes the checker flag for a piece. One, uh, Anthony Cleal takes second only by 0.09. Take a look at that gap.
Uh, David Watts will take third. Joe Foster will take P4 and the fastest lap of a 45.33, despite having those two laps of, un well, not great success. Uh, he has recovered it back to P4. Uh, Paul Alexander tried to defend him off, uh, finishes out on P5. Kevin Ford in 6th, Max Gunter 7th, Stuart Gray 8th, Alex Kemp 9th, and then David Wardron will round out your top 10 for that race. One for recovery, which means we'll have a short break before uh, the next race. But that is the Senior Blues Heat number 2 all completed there. So as the recovery is well underway, here's the 177 and 177 road tax for their heat. As we get closer to half past one, it's 22 minutes past one. Uh, so on to our 12th race now. This microphone can just about pick up what was going on downstairs. Right, so the 177-177 road tax. Patrick wins Rahag and he's on pole uh, with Jason Bear on second. Ian Brownfield and Ben Johnson on second row. And then Harrison Crook gets a row to himself. So we'll run through the first couple of laps here as somebody is getting peckish up here in the commentary box. Someone's um <laughs> Someone's generator is that loud you can hear it through the building. Right then, coming down the main straight then, ladies and gentlemen, let's run through your first few laps of this race. Bertie running on the side there. <laughs> uh, but as we go through And we are underway for heat number two for the one seven sevens both in the non-masters and masters as Patrick gets a little bit of a slight lead at the start of this race. So 50 is slow going through the S's holding up our usual two as uh, Ian Bradfield there. Getting a bit annoyed with getting uh, stuck behind the 50. Well, you're going to have to overtake him as uh, he is being now, uh, so 50 is being swarmed by both him and Harrison Crook. So... Patrick Williams Rahag's slight lead here will be closing real quick. Here's your running order on the left hand side of the screen. As uh, Jason Bear has popped into the pit, so it looks like he was having a mechanical through that race, uh, opening a lap. But through the S's, down the back of the straight, Patrick is the one leading the way. So around the hairpin we go. Through to the right-hander. And as we come closer to the stream break, coming down the main straight, Patrick is leading the way, but Harrison Crook is right on his tail.
Okay then ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the round 10 stream. Pause the music. Uh, yeah, so sorry, I just had to have a lunch break there. I was getting rather hungry, but Patrick went into a hog. We've um, obviously doing every single round up here. You get to watch individual drivers I don't say this often, but that is the best racing from Patrick Williams Rahag this season. Really keeping up with the big boys up in this race so far. I'm just watching them go round the first opening laps. Really keeping up with Ian Brownfield and Harrison Crook, and that is hard on its own. <laughs> When Ian Brownfield and Harrison Crook get an opening gap, they just fly away. But Patrick is just within, well, just over now, uh, but has been within a second of our leaders here. Well, rain has dropped a lot more since um, we started this race. We are on the last lap of this race as well. Fastest lap is Harrison Crook, 42.91. But coming down the main straight, let's go for the check flag for Ian Brownfield, Harrison Crook, and Patrick Winsor Hog. Like I said, that's the best race and very competitive race from Patrick, especially in an opening lap. A couple of laps in a long, long, long time. You should be proud of that. <laughs> Harrison Crook and Ian Brownfield really flying away after that, though. I reckon a bit more practice in the wet, Patrick. When you'll be able to challenge him. Speaking of rain. Hello, darling. <laughs> Can you just wash it off from the top portion of this camera lens and then I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that going over the line? Oh, Jason Bear. Why was Jason Bear let out from the <laughs> take the checkered? Was it? No, it wasn't. Oh, Harrison Croak forgot. <laughs> That's unusual from Harrison. He doesn't forget about the checkered flag. Well, that doesn't count. 4284, by the way, from Ian Branfield. Incredible work. Right. Back to the start. It's a junior road tax with rain. <laughs> There's a bit of rain. Mm. Ava Morris is on pole alongside Ethan Griffiths, uh, Ollie Wise and Carthy Kometa. In the second row, Jasmine Taylor and Lucas Howe on the third row, Joshua Withcombe and Enemy Cotty on the fourth row, and then Jack Weston and Reese Reed on the fifth row. I had to go quick because they're coming out of the pit lane. Wow, that's a splash. <laughs> Someone got a bit wet there and then dipped into the mud on the exit of the pit lane. It was just a splash. Right, heavy rain, juniors, and. Well, we'll find out the rest, won't we? <clears throat> Just had a ham salad roll from upstairs <laughs> in the cafe. I added onions to it. Don't normally have onions, but I'm going to smell that later. Drink lots of liquids, guys. <laughs> Right then, now let's get ready for the first of the third heats. That makes sense, doesn't it? As the 31 flies on out. Are they going to go round again or are they just going to go ahead with this race? And it's a false start. Whoa, spinners. That was the 28. 28? Yeah, 28. Ellis Snow uh, spinning there at the start. Wow, this camera's becoming even more useless to you.
Right then, people, let's get ready once again. Get rid of the overlays there. And are we going to go second time's a charm for this one? It's a false start. I could lip read that one. <laughs> it's like I put an effect on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long arm from our starter. <laughs> well, there it goes. <laughs> Can you tell it's raining? <laughs> uh, so, false start board is still out. And it's gone in. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. Third, 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 third time's a charm. I'm refueled. Oh dear. Okay. Rain's slightly easing up. Not as much as we'd like. But, third time's a charm. Let's get ready. Yeah. And we're underway this time, and it's an absolute rain fest. Not a lot of visibility through the start there, but they're all on circuit. No spinners. Nearly jinxed it. As we go through the S's, down the back straight. Great start from the Junior Rotax here. As we go into the hairpin, side by side for a lot of people. Some in three wide for a split second. Absolutely mad. So around the horseshoe, you can just see how much it is with one spinner there. And that spinner being the 32. That's Ava Morris. Starting at the front there. Unfortunately, spinning though. As we go through the order. So it's Ollie Wise, followed by Karthik Kometa, Ethan Griffiths, Joshua Withcomb, Lucas Howell, Jack West, Emily Cotty, Maxim Smith, Jace, ja Jason? Jasmine Taylor. So sorry. Uh, then Reese Reed. As we have one into the abyss of the Billy's Blind Grass. And it's funny, when you come back on a Monday and it's dried up a little bit, you can just see where everybody's gone off. <laughs> so there's your best lap times and the opening lap times from all of the drivers. Uh, so let's see how this one goes on through. As the 56 leads the way with a 7 tenth gap. There's a lot of people abusing that curb on the kink as you just come on round the corner from the start finish straight. You just hear their chassis go. <coughs> and their body work. Mainly the chassis. <laughs> So it's starting to group up for third position as the 3092 of Jack West trying going around the outside of the WC. As there's been a contact warning for that driver as well. Lots of changes on the grid. But down the main straight we come, and it's Ollie Wise, Karthik Kometa, Jack West, Ethan Griffiths, Joshua Withcomb, Lucas Howe. Uh, then we have Jasmine Taylor, Emily Cotty, Reese Reed, and then Vlad Tomanchuk on your top 10. And we are slightly going to get a bunch up towards P2. Uh, between one, two, three, four drivers. Trying the inside, gets the inside, but is the outside more powerful? It is in this occasion for the 95. So he uses a lot of the curve. 92 using the outside of the exit of the horseshoe and gets ahead. Just shows you how much more power and grip you get on the outside of the track here during the wet. Uh, that's promoted Jack West up, Karthik Mometa down. So through the S's they go, and he's already breaking away Westers to catch up with Ollie Wise. Ellis Snow's in the pits. As Joshua Withcombe given another contact warning again. That's another one for this uh, race so far. And there's all your current warnings as we lead on to lap number five.
best lap time goes to our leader at the moment, a 42.05 set last lap. Jack West nearly matching it with a 42.06. That's close. Um, so <laughs> third position is that WC of Joshua Withcombe. So come down the main straight, you will be able to see that shortly. So there's the change. Joshua Withcombe up into third. Carthy can to fourth. Just over half a second behind. As we have one slow at Billy's. And it looks like a retirement for uh, the one all in red there. I can't see the number. It's a bit too far away for my eyes. Especially uh, with the watered down windows I have to look through. Uh, so it was running near the top positions at the time. And I believe it might be the 95 of Karthik Kometa running a very strong race. But unfortunately, a DNF is on the cards here. Yellow flags are around for Billy's. So that neutralizes the race in that section of the track. And to confirm, it was Karthik Kometa that has DNF'd from this race, unfortunately. As uh, shown by the infographics on the screen. So that does neutralise the race at Billy's for the moment, as our leaders are starting to come back through once more. As it looks like somebody has picked up a chain guard on the uh, top bend. So potentially another DNF for someone for a mechanical this time around. But we shall find out as uh, the race is still continuing on. Big grid coming through from ninth downwards where Vlad Tomanchuk, Jack Metters is and Ava Morris after she's recovered from last to now 11th. So good recovery drive from her. As going cross country goes, <laughs> speaking of the devil, uh, the 32, Ava Morris. Uh, she's off on her travels. <laughs> God, it's been a while since someone's gone cross-country up here. It's a bouncy ride. <laughs> uh, she's now defending off... Uh, that was a 90 number, was it? I can't see. We shall find out who is she is battling off very shortly. I swear... I didn't jinx that. <laughs> so yellows are still remaining at Billy's Blind. Uh, we're just going to pop that one off for the minute. There's the gaps from last time on the screen. Now just popping onto it on there for you. Uh, back to the front of the grid, though, because that is where Jack West is currently uh, showing up. As uh, he is the fastest out there. 41.73. Currently just under two tenths quicker than uh, Ollie Wise is faster. No, it's just over, isn't it? Just under? Just under. I'll make my decision at some point. So down the back straight goes to 91, Ethan Griffiths, who is running in P4. Only a little bit of a margin to him. Uh, and third position, with Joshua Withcombe in a comfortable third at this time. As the yellows have been bought in from Billy's. The car hasn't moved though. Jack West really starting to creep up. Two seconds remain. Where did this eight minutes go? And I'm just noticing there's a lovely puddle into the horseshoe on that inside line. <laughs> I noticed it because there's a reflection of the marshal in the screen. <laughs> right then, so no time is left on the clock anymore. As the last lap board is now out. And it is time for Jack West to push the pedal to the floor. Is he going to be able to catch up with Ollie Wise at the end of this race? Or is Ollie Wise going to be keeping this P1 for this race? Joshua Withcombe, like I said earlier, comfortable P3. But at the moment, it's our front two runners catching up with one of our back markers, which is the 72. 
uh, which is Barnaby Grubb on this occasion. Um, I think there's not going to be enough time for the leaders to catch up with him, though. So, as the base uh, flies out behind me from, I think, Bill Arts' awning, it's time for the checker flag. And it is Ollie Wise that takes the checker flag, followed by Jack West. <laughs> then Joshua Wiscombe, third place. Fastest lap does go to Jack West as well with a 41.53. <coughs> well, hello. Cough it out of nowhere. <coughs> Damn. Uh, P4 is Ethan Griffiths, followed by Lucas Howell in P5. Jasmine Taylor, P6. Uh, with Emily Cotty in P7. Reese Reed will take 8th, Vlad Tomanchuk will take 9th, and then Jarek Matters rounds out your top 10. And that is your grid for that one. Like I said, fastest lap goes to Jack West with a 41.53. And that is the rate end of the Junior Rotax Heat 3 for their race. And we'll see them a little bit later on for the finals. There is no break between now and the finals. Um, when I say now in the finals, I mean Heat 3, the last of the Heat 3s, and then the final. Um, so we shall see how the racing occurs a little bit later on. So we just got one for recovery uh, down the back at Billy's. Right, let's check the grid then for the next race. So it's 100 cadets, Oliver Ratton on pole with Alfred Matthews alongside on row one, Luke McGall and Ethan Cousins on row two, Finley Armshaw and Finley Thursfield. It's a Finley, a Finley knockout on uh, row three, uh, Arthur Way and Devin Gills on row four, and then row five will be Nikita Roberts and Zach Armshaw. So let's go for the formation lap, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get ready to run through another race for the cadets. 11 drivers all together. I believe Devon Gills isn't actually here. So that moves everybody up slightly on the order. So the rain still hasn't eased up from earlier. But here we go down the main street. And we are underway for the Honda Cadets for their third and final heat of today. 
Had some fierce competition throughout this grid. Oh, that was an almighty double jump from this 27. Which, unfortunately, I think that was the... I think that might have been Finley Thirstfield who had to go the other side of the sausage curb. Made an alrighty massive splash. It's a bit of a swimming pool section on the other side of the sausage curb. But he's still running through at the back of the grid, though. So a bit of a recovery drive now needed from him. So running order on the left-hand side of the screen. It's Oliver Ratton followed by Luke McGall, Zach Ormshaw, Alfred Matthews, Nikita Roberts, Charlie White, Arthur Way, Finney Ormshaw, then Shaylen S and the 26, Joseph Davis, and then Finney Thursfield. It rounds out your 11 drivers on circuit. So down the main street comes our top two leading the way. It's Luke McGall and Oliver Ratton. Luke McGall, I believe, has uh, won the last couple of races by a um, margin. So we'll see if that happens again today. Nikita Roberts trying for P3 this time round. Through the S's, down the back straight she goes. Different line from the 21 of Zach Ormshaw. But as she charges down, keeps the inside line. Will she tuck it in nicely going around? She goes up wide on the exit, but stays ahead. And that is Nikita Roberts up into third. 21 of Zach Ormshaw down to fourth. And then it's side by side on the exit of the horseshoe. She's on a lot of the track there between Alfred Matthews and Arthur Way. So d <laughs> down the main straight we come. I said, Nikita Roberts, Zach Ormshaw, Arthur Way, Alfred Matthews, Charlie White. So it's a midfield battle around fourth, which is the threat at the moment. And you can tell that because Zach Ormshaw having to defend ever so slightly to Nikita Roberts means that Nikita Roberts is going to get a bit of a gap to her. And uh, Zach Ormshaw behind, which is going to be nice. 45 6 9 the fastest, just set by Oliver Ratton. Mute McGall, <laughs> 0.01 slower. It's not much. I feel like a, rub a bit of rubber's hit the <laughs> lens of the uh, GoPro there. That's out there at the minute. Yep, spoilers. They're cheap GoPros. Not worth anything. <laughs> right, so Oliver Ratton and Luke McGall battling between one another. Peter Roberts with a comfortable lead there. I think that's a 47 behind her now. I think on the status, status screen at the minute. So one tenth is all that it is between Oliver Ratton and Luke McGall. Arthur Way fourth, Alfred Matthews fifth, Charlie White sixth, Finley Ormshaw seventh, Finley Thursfield eighth, and then it's the 26, 76, and then 21. It's like Ormshaw down seven positions. I think we've had a spinner at some point. So down the main straight then comes your front two runners. That's Oliver Ratton and Luke McGall. Still a battle to be head by those two. 0.08 is a gap over the line. It's still the same as we go through. So through the S's they go. Need it to dump down to get rid of that bit of rubber. <laughs> oh no, oh it's moving. So Nikita Roberts on a comfortable third for the slight moment.
Uh, Zach Ormshaw has been put as out on the YouTube live stream, and there he is. Unfortunately, retired from this race for now. Uh, Oliver Ratton, Luke McGall, Nikita Roberts, Arthur Way, Alfred Matthews, Charlie White, your top six. As the temperature dips here at Clay Pigeon Raceway. Right then, with 1 minute 30 left on the clock, we go to our leaders. The battle that has been continuing for a very long time and uh, avoiding the nice little lake that has formed on the entrance to the horseshoe, uh, which drivers are driving on the outside line. It's actually given some of them, and a lot of them, a lot of better of, uh, entrance into the horseshoe. So it's a bit of a help that being there in some cases. Uh, not if you want to defend it, though. As uh, Oliver Ratton, Luke McGall over the line once again is still unchanged between the two of them. And uh, Luke McGall actually getting a heavy battle this time round. No walking off in the distance for him this time round. It's a battle between the two. And it's lasted a long time indeed. So around the horseshoe, towards the right-hander, for the pack behind, third downwards, uh, but our leader's over the line with 19 seconds remaining, so we're still going to get a lot more time left, and just look at that, the gap, 9.3 seconds, so it's still a big gap, but there's two at the front, and there is a battle at the front. Nikita Roberts with a just li literally just under a second gap between her and Arthur Way, who's running in P4. The 22 going quite wide on the exit of the horseshoe. Did it nearly mess up that position? It didn't. It's just brought them closer, though, once again. So that's just a bit of the same of normal. So down the main straight we come. It's the last lap, ladies and gents. So around the billies. Through the S's we go. Down the back straight. The 22 with a worse line than Luke McGall. Luke McGall tucks in behind. Darts down the inside. It's the last lap dive. And he's ahead. No. It's still side by side. Holy moly. Thrown the, the horseshoe we go. It's through to the right hand, it's still side by side. But the 15, Luke McGall's ahead. Luke McGall's ahead from the top bend down the main straight. And <laughs> what a last lap. Ladies and gentlemen, checker flag goes to Luke McGall. Wowzers, what a last lap. Great drive from Nikita Roberts. She comes out in P3 with Arthur Way in P4. Charlie White, P5. Alfred Matthews rounds out your top six. Finley Thursfield, seventh. Finley Ormshaw, eighth. Uh, and then it's our two novices for ninth and tenth. Uh, top novice is the 26 of Shailen S. What a dive from Luke McGall. If he didn't have gone for that, I don't think that would have changed. So that is the end for the Honda Cadets for their heat number three. That's their last heat of the day, and it's all down to the finals. So are we going to get the same from Luke McGall winning the race on the last lap? Oh.
let's see how it goes. Right, so we're then for the other form of cadets, and that is the Rotax cadets. Jack Blackman and Archie Rogers Tyler on the front row with Marley Fisher and Sally Stafford on the second row. Toby Morris and Ethan Coupland on the third row, and then Morgan Weston will be at the back. And just waiting for this start and race to go on through. So formation lap then. Cut the music. So the right hander towards the top bend, we get ready for the third and final heat. And uh, we are underway for the start of this uh, Rotax Cadet Heat. So down towards the hairpin we go. Round towards the horseshoe. And leading the way is the 87 of Archie Rogers Tyler. Followed by, I think that was a 46, but we shall find out as they come closer to the line. So from the top bend down the main straight we come. Order on the left hand side of the YouTube live stream. So it's R.G. Rogers, Tyler, followed by Stanley Stafford, Jarrett Blackman, Marley Fisher, Ethan Coupland, Morgan Weston, and then Tommy Morris. That is your lineup for the start of this race. It's quite evenly spread at the moment to start this well, race off to the moment so coming down the main straight then not much action happening on this opening lap but more could develop over time
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the stream. Cut the music. Oof. Uh, right, so not been too much going on apart from at the front. Um, it has been a battle between the 46 and 87 of Stanley Stafford and Archie Rogers Tyler. That's the gap for you all. Uh, they've sort of been battling on and off uh, for the... Uh, race duration. As they go into the hairpin next, only three seconds remain on the clock, as you can see. And then we lead up to the top bend and come down the main straights to round off this race with the last lap. There's your fastest lap, though. It's a 45.06, uh, which was set by Stanley Stafford on the sixth lap of this race. We're on to lap 11, as the rain has sort of been... Uh, well, it's been there pretty much the whole time. So down the main, uh, back, main back straight. There we go. Uh, down the back straight we go. And towards the main straight we come to now, ladies and gentlemen, and going to be taking the checker flag. It's close, but it's going to go to the number 46 of Stanley Stafford, who takes the checker flag, followed by Archie Rogers Tyler in second, Molly Fisher third, Jack Blackman fourth, Morgan Weston in fifth, Ethan Cooklin in sixth, and then Tommy Morris in seventh when they come over the line. It's going to be close, though. <laughs> I auto-read all of that. But that is the order. <laughs> there we go. That is the Rotax Cadets for their Heat 3. Right then, let's check out the grid for the senior Rotax. Cameron Crockett's on the front row. It's the first name I saw. Also has Jamie Burt alongside Gina Cook and Tom Taylor on the second row. Rufus Flan and Billy Edgecombe on the third. Jack Maiman and Finn Smith row four. And then the fifth and final row for your top ten. will be Elliot Thomas and Jacob Martin. So here's a formation map then for the Warrior Senior Road Tax. I have for some reason it's a 177 nearly. So through the S's we go for all of these. Get ready to do their formation lap. <laughs> Percy Wellesley then was a absolutely mental on the wheel then. Going straight whilst the wheel was going left right, left right, left right, left right. <laughs> Going to be an interesting start. Cameron Crockett on the front row, eager to get going. He's getting his flap ready to open on his uh, radiator. Everyone weaving apart from Jasmine Kaplan. She's doing a Kimi Raikkonen. <laughs> Everybody weave, I stay in a straight line. So, coming down the main straight. And we are underway for the start of this race. Th 
through the S's and that is the 51 leading the way to Cameron Crockett, the 88 behind, but instantly down the inside and ahead he goes. A little tap from third position driver on Jamie Burt there, the 51, and that was the 25 of Rivers Flan. Nothing game changing or destroying their race orders on the left hand side of the YouTube live stream as per usual. And also your positions on there too. Rufus Flan given a contact warning. So it's Cameron Crockett, Jamie Burt, Rufus Flan, Billy Edgecombe, Jack Maidman, Finn Smith, Elliot Thomas, Tom Rotherham, Arthur Thacker, then Jacob Martin. That is your liner. As I think a bit of fog's rolling in, or is that just because my windows are getting fogged up? Who knows? So around the horseshoe we go. Cameron Crockett leading the way. The 14 around the outside. How many did he overtake? What? That just shows you how much traction there is on that outside line. So over the line we go. Cameron Crockett, Jamie Burke, Rufus Flan, Billy Edgecombe, Jack Maven, Finn Smith, Elliot Thomas, Arthur Thacker. Uh, it was only up one position at the end. Tom Rotherham, uh, then Jacob Martin. I think rubber hits the screen, but then it gets washed away. There it goes. It's probably rubber's getting actually up to this. This is the first time I've had rubber affect the screen. That or bird poo. Cameron Crockett going around the horseshoe, absolutely smashing over the curb. The 14 once again around the outside. That's got to be at least two or three then. Oh, the Thacker's using hacks. He knows the way around that ice outside there. And uh, there's another one there. Hey! <laughs> so there's all your fastest lap times there. Camera Crockett, the one that uh, is the fastest. Even in these conditions, Cameron Crockett is very much known to the conditions that we have. So if you come up here often and every month, you, you, you know what rain is. So down the main straight we come for Cameron Crockett, leading the way. Not by much though, there's not much of a gap at all. And it looks like it's going to be under half a second. Arthur Thacker making up another two positions at that lap. As Evie Pelain and Sam Mitchell have a battle going over the line. Zach Fletcher, Jamie Braffer and Jasmine Kaplan down to P19 for this race. Finn Smith running in P7. Uh, Currently in that mid-pack trying to find a way around the 27. Sorry, the 17. I can read. Bertie Wellesley currently in P13. Still going strong in this race. The weather still changing as we go through. Down the inside, around the outside, sorry, goes the 42. I was going to commentate someone else, but the 42 flying around the outside, copying uh, another driver from earlier, Tom Rotherham, doing the outside move. 12 degrees Celsius outside with a lot of rain. So one second is the gap between Cameron Crockett and Jamie Bre uh, Burt. As the 25 and 14 closing between one another. As they go over the line there, Finn Smith in fifth. Uh, Tom Rotherham at 6th, Billy Edgecombe 7th, Elliot Thomas 8th, Jack Maywood 9th, Jacob Martin 10th.
37 going through a puddle then. Right on the rear of the 23, Elliot Thomas. You know they go through a puddle because a load of smoke comes off their exhausts. But with two minutes, 23, not much action coming from our top drivers. And still no other changes on the grid as of current, apart from Ollie Hughes going up to P9 from 11th. A lot of action going on into the hairpin. Some taking a wider line into it. Some taking advantage of going down the inside. One of the drivers in that lot is Bertie Wellesley. Trying the outside manoeuvre. And, well, he's managed to get ahead that time round. As Bertie goes up ahead of Dan Milner. So down the main straight we come. It's side by side between the 17 and 34. Very tight into Billy's. One's gone a little bit wider. And uh, that is a swap between those two. So uh, the driver now ahead. Change positions. And we'll get that updated in just a short moment. 11 on the outside of the horseshoe with the 23 on the inside. 11 getting ahead. So many changes that are going on there. But the changes that hasn't happened is Cameron Crockett and Jamie Burt. Are they playing the long game as the 51 is just staying behind Cameron Crockett for the minute? Well, the fact has the fastest lap of a 40.80. So into the 40s. The 42 right on the rear of Finn Smith here. Alpha Thacker with a nice little gap. Uh, three seconds to a second. And uh, three seconds to four. But with six seconds remaining. It's side by side on the exit. Defensive into the horseshoe. Then on the right-hander, it's still... I believe that's Cameron Crockett still ahead. And it is indeed last lap of this race then for the senior road tax heat number three. Cameron Crockett is still taking defensive lines into the corners, stopping Jamie Burt having an opportunity here. So as we go towards the top end then and coming down the main straight as we finish off the senior road tax heat number three and the win goes to Cameron Crockett as he celebrates by tapping his side pod. Arthur Thacker does take third in the end and also does take the fastest lap of the event, which is a 40.79, when I say the event of the uh, heats today. Heat three. The rest of the order is as followed though. Rufus Flann in fourth, Tom Rutherham fifth, Finn Smith sixth, Elliot Thomas seventh, Ollie Hughes eighth, uh, Billy Ashcombe ninth, and then round out your top 10 is Sam Mitchell. And then once again, top novice and only novice goes to Jasmine Kaplan. So as they all fly on into the pit lane, let's get your grid for the senior blues. Uh, from one senior to another. Uh, it is Alex Kemp and Steve Groves on the front row with David Watson, Stuart Gray on the second row, David Goody and uh, Kevin Forth on the third row, Max Gunter and Joey Foster on the fourth, and then Michael Bell and Harry Smithson on the fifth row. That is your top ten for the grid. Anthony Cleal at the back, Harry Smithson last race winner in tenth, and then you've got David Watts in third. Could make for an interesting race.
So then let's go for this formation lap, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, go for the third and final heat for the Senior Blues. See how this plays out between these 14 drivers. <coughs> So competitive with uh, <coughs> cars zero sixty six one and four. Not so much from Michael Bell this round, but let's see over the course of the next eight minutes of this race here. So top bend down the main straight we go. And we are off for the Senior Blues heat number three. Let's see who's going to round out from the top. And leading that way it looks like it's going to be the seven of Steve Groves. Let's have a look who is in second after the first couple of corners. Well, going from second to first is the 97, the zero David Watts sneaking into second position. So a lot of changes on the opening part of this lap from that front few slots. Running orders on the left-hand side of your screen. Also, the position moves ready for you all as well. So coming down the main straight then, it's going to be very close, but it's going to be David Watts first over the line, followed by Stuart Gray, Steve Groves, Kevin Ford, Jerry Foster, Alex Kemp, Max Gunter, Michael Bell, Harry Smithson, then Anthony Cleal. Through the S's, down the back straight, go the 0, 97 and 19, followed by the 7 <coughs> of Steve Groves. Looks like he has Jerry Foster in that region as well. And that is him sneaking up to P4. As uh, once again the outside line shines. So down the main straight we go. Fastest lap is from David Watts, a 45.65. He is currently trailing two seconds quicker than Stuart Gray and is actually two seconds than anybody else on the grid as of current. Wow. Lapping two seconds quicker, that also means that two second gap. And also we have a battle at the front there between the 97 and the 19 of uh, Gray and Ford. But don't forget, we have Joey Foster sliding around the outside of the horseshoe. A very fun and exciting one to look at. So David Watts going over the line there, also improving his fastest lap time of a 45.54. But once again, no other driver is in the 45s. That is mega. 4.5 seconds is the gap. As we have a breakdown on the main straight here. Uh, still on track as well. And uh, I think that might be the 13 of Robin Stoddart Stones. But we shall find out. Coming down the main straight though comes... Uh, David Watts, <coughs> slow down slightly coming down the main straight. Looks like this problem Stone at Stones has got himself going again. He is now a lap down. Harry Smithson has popped into the pits. So. Temporarily lost one, and then again two, uh, one back. Sorry, temporarily lost one. Now it was two, and now it's only one. I don't know. Uh, meanwhile, Joey Foster around the outside of the horseshoe. It sounds like a common thing I'll be saying for the next uh, for the final. Speeding on through from the top bend down the main straight we go. 
lovely through these conditions and it's the 66 leading the way to the 19 and David Watts still ahead by a whole near 8 seconds there's not 8 seconds yet but it's 7.9 seconds but we're not anyway so the 66 followed by the 19 is slow out of the S's uh, looks like Anthony Cleo's in that lot as well So David Watts followed by the number four, which is Paul Alexander, one of our back markers for this race. As the 64 of Alex Kemp out of this race, and it looks like a rear w hub failure potentially, as his wheel, it, well, it's in his hand. When I say wheel, I mean rear wheel as uh, that is the end of his race there unfortunately as the uh, trap as uh, recovery marshal struggles to move the car out of the way i want to help him <laughs> So let's continue on. Uh, David Watt's still in the way. The 66 and the 1 having a battle. So Anthony Khalil finding some uh, mid-race pace. As they go into Billy's, they are side by side. And as they come towards the yeses, it is a single file. 66 slotting behind for the moment. So Joey Foster loses a position to the number 1 of jo Anthony Cleal. And Joey Foster will stay in P3. Oh, we'll now go into P3 and stay at P3. In 4th position no fifth position i'll get it right at some point uh no it was fourth position uh fourth position uh kevin ford and stuart gray those two are in a pair but at the moment one minute 47 remains on the clock and david watts leading by the biggest margin of today 11.09 seconds and uh that is 11.89 seconds from jay foster to the lead Joey Foster trying to take that outside line again at the horseshoe. It's a bit far back from Anthony Cleal already. David Watts goes over the line. 45-1-5. Only one of two drivers in the 45s. Anthony Cleal is the other one in it. Not being able to catch up with that pace. So Anthony Cleal to David Watts. Still 11.8 seconds that gap. As David Watts going around the horseshoe towards the top bend next. Obviously got the right hand to go through first, but is coming up towards the top bend and down the main straight. 23 seconds remain. So very evenly spread at the front pack. As we come uh, from uh, the top bend down the main straight, we come to the last lap of this race now. The last lap board is now out. So uh, down he comes and takes the last lap here. One final lap to go. Paul Alexander, one of the back markers in and around. The 66 of Joe Foster, three seconds behind Anthony Cleal.
And ladies and gentlemen, a very uh, lackluster, empty, overtaking ending. I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, taking the checker flag, though, it is uh, David Watts. No overtakes for a very long time near the end there. Anthony Clear will take P2 and then Joey Foster for third. Stuart Gray 4th, Kevin Ford 5th, Max Gunter 6th, Steve Grove 7th, Michael Bell 8th, David Goody in ninth, and then 10th will be David Waldron. So the rain is still continuing to fall here at Clay Pigeon Raceway and we are back with the 177 and 177 Masters. A great race from them last time out. And if you want to catch the action of that one, head over to live.alphatiming.co.uk forward slash cpkc and you'll be able to see the live going on or check out the top right of the screen through this one. We're going to have a short sh stream break here and get ready for the finals a little bit later on.
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the season finale is coming to a close. We're nearing the finals here at Clay Pigeon Raceway. Welcome to round 10. Welcome to the finals and welcome to the last section of the show. So, ladies and gentlemen, the 177 Heat 3 is just finished. So we get into the Heat uh, the end of the heats into the finals and oh here it goes it's all down to this for some people and it's for others time to try and dethrone some more so the championship standings are pretty close in some of them and some of them ended ages ago but let's see how this plays out ladies and gentlemen the finals are due very very shortly right let's check out the grid then for the junior rotax final starting off with a banger uh, and being the junior rotax there's going to be a lot of competition here 85 points for ollie wise uh, so far for this race he'll be starting on pole alongside another driver uh, no, that driver is Jack West. He's in second. Joshua Withcombe and Jasmine Taylor on the second row. Vlad Tomanchuk and Jarek Metters on the third row. Uh, both matching on points. Uh, Emily Cotty and Reese Reed will be on the fourth row. And then on the last row will be Maxim Smith and Danny May Reed. So there's been no break today, uh, so that's why we're straight into it. It is eight minutes to three, so my, yeah, it might be done around half past four. It's going to get dark pretty quick up here. The fog is rolling in here at Clay Pigeon Raceway, as you can tell. So that's going to make it interesting viewing for me, uh, as if I couldn't see much myself anyway. Weather conditions are fairly okay at the minute. It's stopped raining, I think, for the most part. Someone's car alarm's going off. Um, <laughs> hopefully not mine. Um, oh no, it is still raining. If I can focus my eyes somewhat correctly, I can see it raining. Um, so yeah, bit of rain. Uh, yes, to be expected. And it's clay pigeon race. Way. So the finals will be due real, real soon. So stand by, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be uh, hopefully getting on the way really shortly. <laughs> as, as I said once, <gasps> finals time, baby! <laughs> Throwback to a TikTok I made. God. A lot of the stuff I say, I try and... I, if I remember, I try and... Uh, remember to edit it for TikTok, but I always forget. a bit of waiting <laughs> so much for going straight into the finals but uh we uh, should hopefully be getting underway really really soon <laughs> Frank Ward saying, come on, TH calls. Oh, there's some music in the background that I paused just a second ago. Uh, so, come on, TH calls. Uh, they own the shop up here. And then their team from out of there. So, uh, technically, uh, their, their local track, <laughs> their home track. Crazy old tannin.
Finding out what's going on. Oh, we're still waiting. Yeah, I've not had any news yet. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the Junior Rotax Heat 3. This is the grid for you guys at home watching. I just sent the timekeeper a gif of Mr. Bean waiting. <laughs> Movement on the circuit, <laughs> not carts wise, just marshals. Oh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. <gasps> There's action to be had. Here it comes! Here it comes! 
the finals. 10 minutes. 10 minute finals. Oh god. Yeah, nobody will know the duration because I forgot to do the overlay. <laughs> Got to do the overlay because I forgot stuff. Speaking of Tiernan, oh, there's a Lewis Halliday there as well. Uh, someone's skating their cart down the back straight. <laughs> oh no. That looks like the end of their day. So then, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to go for the first final and the last race of 2023 for the Junior Road Tax. It's underway. And that's all I can say, really. It's underway. Uh, right through the S's, down the back straight, and it's the 92. Jack West that leads this race. Got some spinners at the back. 35 and the 70 something caught in that one. I think it might have been the 76. Around the horseshoe they go towards the top bend. Still tight near the front of the grid. But here we go. Running order on the left hand side of the screen. There's still loads of time left to go. But it's Jack West, Ollie Wise, Joshua Withcomb, Vlad Tomanchuk, Reese Reed, Jarrett Metters, Jasmine Taylor, Maxim Smith, Ethan Griffiths. And then Emily Cotty is your top 10 for this race so far. 21 drivers running in this race. Let's see how it goes. Leading the way by a little margin is the 32 and 56. And then the w WC of Joshua Withcomb just chilling in that P3 position. So down the main straight, those two come. Vlad Tomachuk in fourth position. And is currently trying to chase down the WC play of Joshua Withcomb. That's a 53 of Jarek Metters in fifth. A lot of drivers grouping up in that midfield position. From the 6th downwards, it looks like you got 6th down to possibly 10th or 11th. Possibly even more, actually. 2, 4, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, well, you got most of the grid there. Uh, <laughs> you got most of the grid just in that little gap there. Uh, so, fast snap at the moment goes to Jack West with a 41.83. Just, just outing the 41.88 by Ollie Wise. As they disappear into the rain and fog from uh, the camera. And out through the S as they go. Still all swift there. Ava Morris going through. Uh, she is behind Emily Cotty. But around the horse should we go through the right hander. And top bend for our leaders here of Jack West, Ollie Wise. A spin at uh, the back from the 13. Is he laughing? A lot. Laugh. It's Lawton, isn't it? <laughs> Taking a lot of curve. Uh, 39. Billy Vaught through the S's. He took it very cautiously through the S's. <laughs> As a huge smash, uh, smash, splash uh, from the 31 coming out of the exit of the horseshoe. That was mega. Still kept it on the road, still kept going. So not too many changes from our top 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 or 10th. The top 10 unchanged. 
There's a lot of chasing down to do. Don't want to do too many overtakes too early on, but you don't want to hold each other off either. <laughs> So top two separated from third position. Contact warning given to Emily Cotty down in P12. So down the main straight comes our front two leaders, Jack West, Ollie Wise. 0.6 is the gap. And then they got a two second window between second and third position. And then Jarrett Metters has a 2.5 second as well. Uh, gap between himself and fourth. Sorry, Jarrett and third even. Well, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So fifth downwards, still all within contention. Hefty grid there. Ava Morris at the back of that grid. Still running with 21 other drivers on the circuit with one D and S. Did not start, unfortunately, for that driver. But still running with 21 other drivers. Four minutes, 52 left on the clock. This 10 minutes absolutely flying by with the junior road tax. And it is still quite tight in that midfield section of the, of the grid. Starting to almost see some opportunities open up here still rather tight a lot of defensive lines going through from the uh from the 91 and the 68 danny may reed and ethan griffiths not in that order wc with a plenty of room but a three second gap is what is there So waiting for some changes here. Uh, speaking of actually changes, there we go. That did something. Uh, we have it here, the 68, I believe that is, of Danny A. May Reed, Ethan Griffiths. There's starting to be some potential moves from these drivers here. So coming down the main straight. So you've got the fourth position of Jarrett Metters. Then uh, Vlad Tom and Chuck, Jasmine Taylor, Maxim Smith, Reese, Danny May Reed, who moves up a position. Uh, then you've got Reese Reed down to ninth. Ava Morrison moves up into the top ten. Also darting down the inside of the S's goes the 32 on the 33. Ava Morris making up some moves in this race. Uh, meanwhile, one off on the outside here of the horseshoe. Stop temporarily as the yellow flag was out temporarily. Um, but, but continues on. So it goes Jack West, Ollie Wise. And down the main straight comes the 13, Izzy Law uh, Lawton. As that is our back marker for this race. So still some more changes here. Let's get the gaps on the YouTube live stream for you all at home. Tell you what the gaps are between everybody. It's two tenths. And I've been summoned. I bet it's a surname that I've said wrong. So two minutes, 25 left on the clock.
Right, so Jack West, Ollie Wise still leading the way. Seven seconds is the gap. Not the biggest of this race meeting so far. Uh, I think that was 11 seconds was the gap. Um, which was set by, I think, was the Senior Blues. Uh, 33 seconds, though, remain. Ava Morris has slid up to eighth position throughout these last few laps. And fastest is Ollie Wise with a 41.46. So there goes our leaders there. So everybody going through, time has run out on the clock. So that is the end of the 10 minutes. So we're now on to one last lap of this race. Yellow flags down at the, down at Billy's temporarily. As Izzy Lawton goes over the line. Meanwhile, we go to the final lap. And this is the last lap for the junior road tax for this race meeting for round number 10, race 19, Junior Rotax, who will take the race win and add a lot of points to their championship fight. So down at the back straight we go. Jack West still leads away by 0.5. That's what it was over the line initially. Around the horseshoe next. The 92 still leads it. Now, coming down the main straight, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. The last checker flag for the Junior Rotax in 2023. And it goes to Jack West, number 92, who wins at the Junior Rotax final for round 10 and for the 2023 championship. So, Ollie Wise takes second, Joshua Withcombe third, Jarek Metters fourth, Jasmine Taylor fifth, Ava Morris will take sixth, Maxim Smith seventh. Some of these within a tenth or two. Uh, Danny, May Re uh, Danny May Reed in eighth. Lucas Howe ninth. And then Emily Cotty will round out your top ten. And at the end of this race day, our top novice is Eddie Stewart. The number 45 who finished out in P12. So a strong race there from Eddie Stewart. For the novices, fastest lap goes to... And that goes to Ollie Wise with a 41.46. So that is it for the Junior Rotax for 2023. Like I said, uh, we'll be back with them, I'm sure, next year. But that is all for the Junior Rotax final. Right, to the grid then for the next race, and it is the Honda Cadets. Uh, we have 12 drivers all together, as uh, one of them is here. Yes, no. Thirteen drivers all together. <laughs> uh, so let's see how this final goes ahead. So we're just waiting for a recovery.
so we'll be getting underway shortly. Uh, I'll have to check the grid. So it's Luke McGall and Ratton on the front row. Nikita Roberts and Charlie White on the second row. Alfred Matthews and Zach Ormshaw on the third row. Finley Thursford and Arthur Way on the fourth row. And then the fifth row will be Finley Ormshaw and Shailen Srikantan. I think I may have butchered it still. Uh, but there we go. <laughs> All right then. The formation lap then for the Honda Cadets for the final. Now, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and get ready for the bonus content over the winter and also for next year's championship. You get all the notifications on that when it comes out and keep it on our Facebook for that content too. Hit that like button as well if you are enjoying the championships so far. So let's see how it goes. Right, so coming from the top bend then and down the main straight we go for this race. And we are underway straight away first time round. So around Billy's we go. Through the S's and down the back straight and it's the 15 of Luke McGool, a very strong contender today. I believe has won all the heats today. So around the hairpin, down towards the horseshoe. And it's Nikita Roberts in second position here. So through the right-hander towards the top bend. And we'll give you the running order on the left-hand side of the YouTube live stream here for you all. So it's Luke McGall, Nikita Roberts, then Arthur Way, Oliver Ratton, Alfred Matthews, uh, then it's Finley Ormshaw, uh, Finley Thursfield, Joseph Davis, Charlie White, and then the number 26 of Shailen. So only 10 drivers altogether in this race. It looks like a couple of them dropped out uh, before the final. But nevertheless, through the fog... We can just about see the drivers plowing on through this race. Nikita Roberts trying to defend the third position driver of Arthur Way. So from the top bend down the main straight we come once again. So it's Luke McGall, Nikita Roberts, Arthur Way still for your top three. She is defending her little socks off as fourth position of Oliver Ratton. Goes down the inside. I think those two are swap positions. So it is the 22, then a 47. So that is that change there. And there's the gaps as they went over the line. But around the hairpin, you can sort of see. Horseshoe. Nikita still in that P2 position. There's a lot of defending to be done over the next 7 minutes, 52 seconds. So down the main straight we come, Luke McGall with a 1.5 second lead before. And it is 2.2 seconds now. Oliver Ratton in third, Arthur Way swapping position as well. And some changes at the back. Charlie White getting up into eighth position ahead of Joseph Davis. So Nikita Roberts just holding out in that P2 at the moment around the horseshoe, the 22. Ratton really right on the rear of Roberts as we go on the right-hander towards the top bend. So there goes Luke McGall, our current leader, with the fastest lap of the race as well so far, 45-47. Set that on lap three, so only a couple of laps ago. Nikita Roberts at threat now. She's on the outside. Ratten down the inside. And there we go. There's that change. Nikita Roberts down to P3, but stays on the rear of Ratten for the minute. Or does she? She's looking for the inside line. This is a new Nikita Roberts. That Friday practice really has scrubbed off on her today. And she is trying to attack back straight away. It's still in third position as we go through the horseshoe. 
but that might be the end of that battle. Or is it? We don't know. So down the main straight, there goes Luke McCall. And then comes the rest of the field. Are they going to work together to catch up with Luke McGall? There is a 3.2 second gap to fill. So will they be able to close it up at all to try and get the top play in position? Or is Luke McGall going to dominate today with a win in every single race that I know of anyway? Obviously, if you want to check out the results, you'll be able to find them on the results page. Head over to the Clay Pigeon Car Club website, and uh, you should be able to see the results. If not, it's results.alphatimen.co.uk forward slash cbkc. Click on round 10, and you will be able to find them. So, a 45-3-3. I can't speak at the minute. Uh, for Luke McGall, absolutely flying down the grid order at the minute 3.6 seconds is a gap so it's not increasing that much but it is a tenth a lap at the moment so is oliver ratton going to be able to do that and just into the fog it's very close between nikita roberts and alfred matthews it's side by side for the horseshoe a little nudge from the rear between the two nikita's trying to hold out the outside she's down to fourth So Luke McGall just going over the line there. So Nikita down into P4. And Arthur Way's in fifth position. Charlie White six, so he's creeping up the order slowly. And then it's Ormshaw, Srikantan, and then Davies. I'm trying to pronounce it. Uh, Alfred Matthews given a contact warning of for contact, I was about to say then. <laughs> So around the horseshoe we go. The right-hander. And then towards the top bend we go once again for that battle for P2, 3 and 4. And that's Luke McGall just going over the line there. 3 minutes 4... I still can't speak. 3 minutes 50 left to go. I might be able to get my words out correctly in a minute. So around the hairpin, around the horseshoe for Luke McGall. The rest of the field here, 4.6 is the gap. So 250, it's not changing much out there at the minute. Nikita Roberts just trying to catch back to the rear of Alfred Matthews again. Five seconds is the gap, though. It is quite a big gap to that lead at the minute. And it could result this one out. So down the main straight we go for the 22, Oliver Ratton, and then Alfred Matthews, Nikita Roberts. Arthur Way, only 1.7 seconds behind Nikita Roberts. As we go for another lap here, still two minutes left on the clock here. So down the main street, Luke McGall. Nearly matching his best. 45-3-4 that time around. Uh, but the gap, 6.1 seconds. It's uh, increasing quite a fair bit here.
as Nikita Roberts has dropped back a little bit to Alfred Matthews. Supporting the chat from Daniel Blart and saying, Come on, Ratten. He's got to find 6.3 seconds now. That's what he needs to find to try and catch up to Luke McGall, who has just flown away. Really, it's a defense for P2. Alfred Matthews right behind at the 22. And Nikita Roberts holding her own there in P4. And we've only had one contact one in this race, uh, which was Alfred Matthews a uh, few laps ago. So there goes Luke McGall once again. Still no change from the rest of the grid. The clock is at zero, I've only just noticed. So going on through the 76 er close to the 26 at the back of the pack. See if there's any changes a bit later on from those two. Uh, meanwhile, Luke McCall going up towards the top bend as we get closer to the last lap of this race. So top bend down the main straights. So here we go, last lap of this race, and it's going for Luke McGall here, who has absolutely dominated through today with uh, one of the heats even doing a last lap overtake and dive, which allowed him to go up to first position to pretty much have a win for races one, two, and three for all the heats for him. And the Honda Cadets, but nevertheless, he's coming around the last few corners and he will be the one that will be taking the checkered flag here. So up towards the top bend and ladies and gentlemen, rounding out 2023 for the Honda Cadets for the last time this year. It's going to be Luke McGall who takes the checkered flag for the Honda Cadets here. Oliver Ratten will take second, Alfred Matthews third, Nikita Roberts fourth. And it's a drag race to the line. Charlie White takes fifth. Arthur Way takes sixth. Finley Thursfield will take seventh. And then there's a few at the end here. Finley Omshaw eighth. And then ninth will be the 26th of Shaylen Sarik Atan. And then Joseph Davis will be rounding out the top 10. Uh, so top novice is the 26th Shaylen S. That is the top novice for this weekend so there we go so that is it everybody for the honda cadets uh for the full results make sure to take check out the results page once they have been finalized obviously everything's provisional on here until then a fast lap by the way Luke McGall, 45 3 3 
Ladies and gentlemen, just had uh, somebody pop into the office real briefly. Uh, so the Rotax Cadet final is underway. So let's get you running in order for this race so far. So it's Archie Rogers Tyler in first, Danny Stafford second, Marty Fisher third, Jack Blackman fourth, Morgan Weston in fifth, and then Ethan Coupland in sixth. That is it so far. So 4487 is what it is to begin with. So let's see how this one rounds out. We've got seven minutes 50 left on the clock. Uh, my flow sort of been <laughs> taken out of whack here. So it's uh, uh, Stanley Stafford followed by Marty Fisher, then Jack Blackman, uh, Morgan Weston, then Archie Rogers Tyler, then Ethan Coupland. Can't see what's gone out of there because of the fog. Uh, so, Rotax Cadets then. Uh, this is the last one of the year for them. We've had a mixed amount of them this year. So, Stanley Stafford followed by Marty Fisher, then Jack Blackman, Morgan Weston. Uh, sorry, Archie Rogers Tyler, then Morgan Weston. Uh, they're both quite close at the line. I've lost my brain of thought completely. <laughs> so, 6 minutes 20, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so, we've slowly had uh, the grid increase throughout the year This uh, with the Rotax Cadets. Hopefully, we'll get a bigger grid next year. And, uh, yeah, we've had more of the Rotax Cadets than Intermax this year. Obviously, no Intermax this year. Well, this year. There was Intermax, but not for the last three races. Um... I, I guess there's not a lot of Intermax in the south of England at the moment. Hopefully we'll get more of them next year. But as it stands, Rotax Cadet, we have six drivers racing so far. I think the most we've had is about eight. So it's great to see those joining the championship. It allowed us uh, midway through the season to split uh, the Rotax Cadets to get their own finals and their own heats. And allow Stanley Stafford, for example, on the last race for the Rotax Cadets this year, to go four seconds ahead of the leaders, uh, for the lead even, and uh, be winning the race so far. Still nearing, well, nearing the halfway point of this race.
So the midfield, second, third and fourth, starting to try and catch back up with our leader here. Uh, that gap is five seconds and it is growing ever so slightly, but possibly the front three, second, third and fourth uh, might try and work together to catch back up to Stanley Stafford out in front. Archie Rogers tied it in fourth position after recovery from earlier by the looks of it. Didn't catch the starts, but a So there goes Stanley Stafford over the line for nine laps of this race. Argy Rogers Tyler snuck up into second. And the gap is 6.4. Argy Rogers Tyler, when he first joined, absolutely shown his pace off straight away. Quick driver out there. Currently charging down towards Stanley Stafford. Uh, and within 2 minutes 37 uh, seconds, is that gap going to close? It won't... Mm, it'll be close, but it's not going to be as close as we think it is. 6 seconds in 2 minutes 24. Is it doable? Well, he's knocked off 0 0.02. <laughs> Still a huge gap though. The running order not changed for quite a few laps here. Uh, the only two actually close together at the moment is Marley Fisher and Jack Blackman. Uh, the 81 and the 29. So here we go once again. Another lap for Stanley Stafford. And 6.5 seconds still. Uh, it's very even on times between Stanley Stafford and Archie Rogers Tyler. Uh, 44.95 last time out. 45 seconds from Rogers Tyler. As he starts to leave the rest of the pack behind. Not creeped into the 44s for a little while. Six point seven now the gap. We're just we're just gap watching for this race. Uh, to be fair, though, Marley Fisher and uh, Jack Blackman, he's starting to catch up to the rear. Those two are uh, closing that gap. 0.18 was the last time over the line. So there could be a change between those two. There's 20 seconds left on the clock. So not much time left remaining. And not many races left remaining. It's nearing quarter to four. Uh, daylight sort of ends about half four. So hopefully we'll be done by there, especially with the fog. It's going to be dark. It's going to be scary. Mummy. Uh. At the moment, though, time has finished ticking. Seven seconds is the gap. Three seconds from second to third, and then that 
only close races, Fisher and Blackman. Anyway, coming down the main straight is Stanley Stafford to take the last lap of this race. Uh, not much of the Rotax Cadet final uh, heats today were uh, commentated on. That's only due to myself trying to take uh, stream breaks. One man show can be quite tiring. <laughs> So down the back straight goes the other two of Fisher and Blackman. Rogers Tyler in second. And it's going to be now coming from the top bend down the main straights. Ladies and gentlemen, to come and take the check of flag. It's going to be Stanley Stafford who wins for the Rotax Cadets for the last time this year. RG Rogers Tyler will take P2. And at the end of that one, Marley Fisher and Jack Blackman don't move positions, so it's third and fourth for them, respectively. And then, last but not least, out the last two, Morgan Weston and then Ethan Coupland will round out the six drivers for the Clay Pigeon Kart Club Championships, Rotax Cadets. Okay, then we can actually see the grid of the next one because there's nobody in the office. Uh, there's nobody up here. Uh, so it's the senior Rotax, and ooh, Cameron Crockett is on the front row after a rather successful day today. That's going to help his championship battle. Arthur Thacker's in second, so that's your front row. Tom Rotherham and Ollie Hughes on the second row with Sam Mitchell and Bertie Wellesley on the third row. Bertie's had a brilliant day today. Bertie Wellesley. Uh, then it's going to be Rufus Land, then Jake and Martin. And then on the fifth and final row that we talk about is Jamie Burt and Finn Smith. That is your top ten for the Senior Rotax final. So as they come out for the formation lap here, let's see how they go. One of the bigger grids of this weekend as well. The juniors and seniors, both large grids. 20 drivers all together. And let's see how it goes. Like I said, Cameron Crockett on the front row. Bertie Wellesley on the third row. Ooh. And 10 minutes to play with. Let's see how it goes. Let's try and mask a yawn. Tin and at the top there. Right, coming down the main straight a bit too quick. People are eager. Cameron Crockett's eager. Oh, back is eager. It's a false start to begin with. Fun fact more formation laps. Don't actually warm your tyres up that much. <laughs> Because by the time you get down to the marshals slowing you down, you actually lose a lot of heat at your tyres. Fun facts with Alex. How do I know that? It's just common sense. <laughs> Not common sense, really, but hey, oh, hey, oh, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Right, senior right tyres, let's get it going. So, towards the top bend then. And uh, let's get going for this one as they come down the main straights. And it is underway for the senior Rotax. Down into Billy's we go. Is it close? Well, it's close between the front two runners. And that's Cameron Crockett and Arthur Thacker. Down the back straight they go. And also in that lot might be Tom Rotherham trying to sneak in there around the third position mark. As Arthur Thacker takes to the grass. So going a bit too wide there. To go around the horseshoe. Through to the right-hander. Running order on the left-hand side of the YouTube live stream. And coming down the main straight will be your runners as follows. So, 
It is going to be, at the moment, Cameron Crockett, followed by Tom Rotherham, Ollie Hughes, J Jacob Martin, Arthur Thacker, Sam Mitchell, Finn Smith, Jamie Burt, Elliot Thomas, and Rufus Flan. Bertie Wellesley not with a great start, down 10 positions. Currently running in P15. Another change or jockey for position. It's Tom Rotherham and Cameron Crockett down into the horseshoe. Someone going around the outside. The 14 of Arthur Thacker using the very grippy outside of the horseshoe. And as we come down the main straight, Tom Rotherham, as he comes down here, let's go for your fastest lap so far. So 41.71, Tom Rotherham set that just now. So, two, four, six, eight, nine. Your top nine are all very close together for contention here. As we go into the hairpin, Tom Rotherham taking a wider entrance into the hairpin. Cameron Crockett taking a really deep line. The 14 of Arthur Thacker once again making that outside line work at the horseshoe. It's brilliant to watch that on and on from all the different grids that we have. But the 42 leading at the moment by six tenths as all of that updates on your screens at home as well. So around, but as we go through the S's for Tom Rotherham, Sam Mitchell losing three positions that lap down to ninth. That just shows you how tight it is in that area. And it looks like we've already got a first warning here for this rate, and that goes to Elliot Thomas. A contact warning as shown by the CW at the edge of the screen there. So still continuing on. Six tenths is a gap between Tom Rutherford and Cameron Crockett. Arthur Thacker's in third. Fourth is Ollie Hughes. Fifth, Jacob Martin. And then Jamie Burton, Finn Smith right behind. And it's really close in there. The 14, Arthur Thacker once again using that outside line and straight beside Cameron Crockett and straight in front. Slams the door closed. And up into second goes Arthur Thacker. Very quickly going up the order, using that outside line at the horseshoe. Some drivers have used it, some haven't. And that is that. JNR Karting. Have Junior's already done their finals? Yep. Uh, we're on to the third finals already. Uh, junior Rotax was out first. Different running order to usual. As we got a spinner down at the Billies. And that was the 77 of uh, Jasmine Kaplan, one of our the one and only novice. So Tom Rotherham, Arthur Thacker, Cameron Crockett, Ollie Hughes, Jamie Burt, Jacob Martin, Finn Smith. As the field hasn't changed much, Billy Edgecombe ahead of Bertie Wellesley. As I say that, though. So towards the top bend then comes our leader for this one. We're tight at the horseshoe, banging wheels. This is a 40. I want to say that might have been Bertie. <laughs> Competitive there. Right, uh, so the 42, Tom Rotherham still leads the way in this race. As Ollie Hughes loses 15 positions. That last lap. But Tom Rotherham followed by Arthur Thacker, then Cameron Crockett. Jamie Burt slowly joining into this top three. The gaps are still there at the moment. Ollie, Ollie Hughes is a lap down.
And there's like another contact warnings just being put onto the field. That goes to Jack Maidment this time round. But we're continuing on in this race and it's getting close at the top here. Arthur Thacker possibly using that outside line again at the horseshoe and he's just creeping ever so closer. Four tenths. Now the gap. Cameron Crack Cr Crack it? Crockett goes uh, fastest. I apologise. Apologise for that one. Uh, Cameron Crockett goes uh, fastest. A 40.77. As there's three minutes 30 left on the clock, daylight is slowly going down. We must be nearing four o'clock here at Clay Pigeon Raceway. Tom Rotherham with the defensive line into the horseshoe, but it doesn't matter because Arthur Thacker chooses the outside line. Seems to be quick for him, and it does work for him as well at the same time. Cameron Crockett slowly closing the gap as well. Five tenths now between Tom Rotherham and Arthur Thacker. Cameron Crockett making it that gap between second and third smaller. Jamie Burt still just hovering around the 2.5 second gap between him and third. So under three minutes left on the clock and still plenty of action yet to come. It's just being teased. Currently being teased for us. Cameron Crockett once again going even quicker. 40.76. The gaps close into Tom Rotherham and also to Arthur Thacker. We could see some change in the next couple of laps. Arthur Thacker really using the outside. He's also using out the hairpin. Here we go. Outside this time. No, he sticks on the inside this time around at the horseshoe. So no change there. So then, let's see it already. The 14 right on the back of the 42. Arthur Thacker has caught re up really quickly to Tom Rotherham. Now this comfortable lead for Tom Rotherham is gone. Arthur Thacker for the outside. The 42 comes out wide. And is it going to be a switcheroo into the right-hander? A little slingshot down the inside. And Arthur Thacker. What a move from Arthur Thacker there from the top bend. Down the main straight he comes. Tom Rotherham down to second. What a move. Slingshot around the outside. And now has the lead. So down the back straight we go. Arthur Thacker leads it. Tom Rotherham second now. Cameron Crockett still in third. 45 second remain. So around the horseshoe we go to the right-hander. And then towards the top bend we go. Also Arthur Thacker with the uh, fastest lap of the uh, race as well. So down the main straight. Arthur Thacker goes even quicker. Once again a 40.65 second driver to hit the 40s. Through the S's. Down the back straight we go. The 14 still leading the way. Tom Rotherham stays in second at the minute. Cameron Crockett is still in third, catching slowly. And there is no time left on the clock, so we are nearing the last race here. So here we go. Arthur Thacker, last lap. I think I said last race just a second ago as well. I didn't really, I didn't mean to say that. So through the S's, down the back straight, catching up with the 77 of Jasmine Kaplan, our back marker on this occasion, and novice. So into the hairpin we go. Cameron Crockett going for a late lunge. It's close, but the door is closed. Was that the only opportunity for Cameron Crockett for second? We shall find out right-hander for those. Leader, though, coming up towards the top bend. 
And ladies and gentlemen, going to be taking a checkered flag here and taking a wonderful, spectacular win here. No hands! Uh, it's Arthur Thacker who wins the Senior Rotax Final for the last time this year. What a move early on from Arthur Thacker. Allowed him to take the lead by an absolute incredibly incredible way. Tom Rotherham will take second, Cameron Crockett third, Jamie Burt fourth, Finn Smith is fifth, Elliot Thomas sixth, Sam Mitchell seventh, Jacob Martin eighth, Dan Milner ninth, and then Daniel Beard tenth. Fastest lap goes to Arthur Thacker. After after that, I think we need to sit down. Oh, wait, I am sat down. Uh, Jasmine Kaplan going over the line there is our top novice and only novice for that race. There we go. Well, the seniors did it for me this time round. That is the... That's an incredible final. Right, to the grid then for the other senior group. Uh, this time it's the blue kind. Not the dabba dee dabba die kind, but the senior blues. Uh, Anthony Cleal and Joey Foster on pole. Hello. Uh, David Watts is on the second row as well. So... That's going to be close between those. Stuart Gray alongside. Kevin Ford and Paul, Paul Alexander on the third row. Harry Smithson and Max Gunter on the fourth row. And then the fifth row will be Steve Groves and Robert Stoddart Stones. So that is that for the Senior Blues. As I sniff away. Nobody else recovered after that. <laughs> so, two more races left to go for today's race. Let's see how it goes. Uh, uh, GNR Carton saying who won the Junior Rotax. Um, I can't remember. Um, but if you want to remember, head over to results.alphatiming.co.uk forward slash C. No? Yeah. Forward slash CBKC. Uh, and then you'll be able to find the results there or go to the results page on Alpha Timing. And search for Clay Pigeon Car Club. Okay then, the penultimate race for today and the last race for the Senior Blue. Who do you reckon it's going to be? Anthony Cleo, Joey Foster, David Watts. That is the three that have been competitive for the last three races. Well, the l definitely the last two races, that's for sure. Let's see how it goes, though. I itched my eye. That was a mistake. Uh, <laughs> so, down the main straight, then. And let's go for the last... Senior Blue Race of 2023 in the Clay Pigeon Cart Club Championships. And it is underway through Billy's We Go. Through the S's. Down the back straight we go. And it's the number one that leads the way. It's Anthony Cleo. And then I think that was Joey Foster that I saw in second position there. So around the hairpin we go. Towards the horseshoe. And down the main straight we come. Running order on the right hand, left, right hand side, left hand side of the YouTube live stream. So it's Anthony Cleo followed by Joey Foster, then David Watts, Paul Alexander, Stuart Gray, Harry Smithson, Kevin Ford, Robin Stollett Stones, Max Gunter, and then Steve Groves is your top 10. 
So three DSs down the back straight we go. Forty six oh seven for an opening lap from Anthony Cleal. Jerry Foster, uh, another one that uses that outside line pretty much all the time. It's worked for uh, Arthur Thacker just now, and uh, it does work for Jerry Foster too. So around they come. David Watts up into second position. Jerry Foster down to third. Lots of changes. Fifth and sixth swapped, and so did seventh and eighth. Robin Stollett Stones up into P7. So around the hairpin we go towards the horseshoe. The zero of David Watt. Real close to Anthony Cleal. In fact, side by side now going up into the top bend. And stayed the same for the minute, but the gap is 0.12. So through the S's, down the back straight, those go. The 66 of Joe Foster just watching this race unfold. Poor Alexander a little bit further back. Still plenty of time to try and catch up though. And is that a change for the lead coming down into the horseshoe? It is the zero ahead of the one. And the 66 of Joe Foster skating around the horseshoe. as they come down the main straight here to kick off another lap. Seven minutes remaining for the Senior Blues. Paul Alexander staying in that fourth position. Not much movement from the rest of the grid at the moment. 45-28 is the fastest lap as of, uh, as of the moment. David Watts flying on three. Meanwhile, it's side by side between the 66 and the one. Going into the hairpin now towards the horseshoe. This battle's just going to slow them up a little bit, though. It can't last too long if they want to try for that P1. So towards... Whoops. Uh, towards the top we go. David Wardron there down in third position. Uh, I think he spun off somewhere at some point. 1 minute 13 was his last lap. 1.2 is the gap. And it looks like they have swapped positions as well, so not too big of a gap to worry about. Uh, 1.2 seconds. Definitely doable if you can be quicker than David Watts, which is a problem when uh, you're lapping 45 fours and he's lapping 45 zeros. That's what his last lap was. Nice and quick for the Senior Blues. There goes David Waldron. And then goes your leader, David Watts. Then Joey Foster. Then Anthony Cleal. Paul Alexander is 2.3 seconds behind the top three. Well, especially third, anyway. Currently four seconds behind our leader. Less than five minutes to go, just under halfway of this race left to go. And it is starting to get a lot darker up here. You can just see the daylight fading ever so slowly. So Watts leads the way to Foster, Cleal, then Alexander, Stoddard, Stones, and Smith, and Gray, Ford, Gunter, then Kemp. That is your top ten. All the surnames. <laughs>
So we're still flying through this race here, and uh, the zero of David Watts overtaken our back marker, which is David Waldron, the number five. Don't forget, the trophy presentation will be held uh, just half, an, I think it's half an hour after the last results have been put in. Uh, which means uh, we'll be live over on Instagram a little bit later on for, uh, on the uh, Clay Pigeon Cart Club. Instagram is at Clay Pigeon Cart Club. Nice and easy to remember. So that is where we will be live for the trophy presentation. Uh, so you can see all of the official winners from this race and see them celebrate or get very embarrassed. <laughs> so we've still got two and a half minutes left on the clock. And it is a bit empty on the old overtake front. As everyone's just settling into this race as of the moment. There's been nothing on the old message screen for this one. It's been a quiet race indeed. Look at that daylight fading so quickly. 48 seconds remaining. David Watt still leads away by 3.35 seconds to Joey Foster. Here goes the 19 of Kevin Ford ahead of Stuart Gray. One of the first overtakes in a while in this race. And looks like Kevin Ford's just, just about breaking away slowly. But meanwhile, down the main straight we go. 14 seconds left. That means there's another lap left to go. So we're on the penultimate lap here. David Watts, Joey Foster, then Anthony Cleal. Paul Alexander fourth. David Waldron is still in 14th. Lap down. Another swap between... Oh, there wasn't a swap between. <laughs> that was the old message. Uh, Kevin Ford still ahead of Stuart Gray. Steve Groves goes ahead of Michael Bell. Uh, but meanwhile, coming down the main street, we go on to the last lap of this race for the Senior Blues. Oh, it must be getting dark. I'm yawning more. <laughs> oh, man. So, David Watts with a 45-second dead lap, uh, best lap time. 45-0-0. And then coming down the main straight, ladies and gentlemen, it's... Been a quiet ending to this race, but taking the checker flag is going to be David Watts, who takes the checker flag for 
the Senior Blue Final. 45 second lap time. Joey Foster in second, uh, followed by Anthony Cleo in third. And the rest of the grid slowly coming on through. A drag race between Harry Smithson and Robert Stollett Stones. And I think it changed right at the end there. Harry Smith Smithson fifth. And then sixth is Robin Stoddart Stones. Uh, Paul Alexander fourth, by the way. Uh, Kevin Ford in seventh. Stuart Gray eighth. Max Gunter ninth. And then Alex Kemp will round out your top ten. As the rest of the field come on over the line. And there it is. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're on to the final race of today and the final race of 2023. It's been a roller coaster of a championship. Lots of drama between the ways, but a lot of comp competition through the ways. And one where it's been mainly dominated by one driver. Let's go to the 177s for their final. And of course, Harrison Crook and Ian Branfield on the front row. Patrick Williams Rahag and Ben Johnson on the second row. James, Jason Bear on the back of the grid. He's had a couple of DNFs today. So we shall see how it goes. Brum, brum, brum. Sorry, I'm just making an annoying revving road. <laughs> so, out come the 177s. And 177 Masters as well, of course. So here we go then, the final race of 2023, and it rounds off with the 177 and 177 Masters. Five drivers all together. So, a very quiet moment as they come down the grid. Harrison Crook and uh, Ian Bradfield have a go with each other, but it is off for the last race here and the finals for the one that seven sevens. And already it's a battle between Ian Bradfield and Harrison Crook. So, down the back straight we go as the light fades even more. It's nearing 20 minutes past four. This race will finish roughly just before half past. Perfect timing, really. Look how dark it is. Right then, so the order on the left-hand side of the YouTube live stream. So it is going to be... Harrison Crook, followed by Ian Brownfield, Ben Johnson, then Patrick Williams, Rahag. Fastest out there, of course. At the minute is the 43.73 set by Harrison Crook. What an opening lap. So Ben Johnson are holding off Patrick Williams, Rahag, going into the hairpin as he just slides right on the out in, uh, inside. There we go. And it's a swapper room for the horseshoe, though. And down the main straight we come for these two. This race perfectly timed to the <laughs> to the light levels at Clay today. Patrick Williams Rahog trying to get past Ben Johnson. Oh, and as he spins it on the exit of the S's. 
as he um, slaps his forehead. <laughs> Already calling himself an idiot. <laughs> oh, Patrick. It's a recovery drive for Patrick Williams for Hog now. And he's had the pace today. So let's see how it plays out. So Harrison Crook followed by Ian Branfield, then Ben Johnson. Yep, there we go. Uh, then Jason Bear and then Patrick williams Rahag for your order change. So over the line, Harrison Crick, then uh, Ian Branfield. It's going to be a lot of this for the minutes. A gap nine tenths, so just under a second. So Ian Branfield trying to claw away at that gap that Harrison Crook has had. Patrick slowly closing a three second gap. So back to over a second for Ian Bradfield. <laughs> Slowly moving through this race. Jason Bear's got some pace at this later stage to Ben Johnson. 1.1 now from 1.7, I think it was. Get the right camera angle at some point. There goes Patrick williams Hog down the back straight. Still has to try and find that three seconds. Knocked off two tenths last time round. 177's been quite quiet the last couple of years up here. Sort of averaging around five drivers every single round. And it's great to see those five still returning to the championship and still performing a quite competitive bunch. Harrison Crooks had a few, few mechanicals this year, which gives us some, uh, gave us on the occasion some surprising races. But uh, bouncing back at the finals, uh, it's, it's most times his strong point. So the light really fading here at Clay Pigeon. As we get into winter time, of course. As it looks like Patrick Winsberg has had another off there. Didn't see it, unfortunately. So. As he comes over the line there, 49.96 that time round. So four and a half minutes left to go. And not much action from the 177s. At the moment, when I say at the moment, because uh, Jason Bear is catching the rear of Ben Johnson. So Harrison Crook with a 41.99. Set on lap three, so unchanged for a short while. Still no action from our front two. And keep an eye on Ben Johnson. Uh, <laughs> getting motion blur from one of the uh, cameras. Uh, <laughs> ben Johnson versus Jason Bear for this final here. 
Through the S's, down the back straight we go between those two. <laughs> this camera's not liking this darkness. <laughs> so down the main straight then. <clears throat> the change is going to be made here potentially. Ben Johnson did take a defensive line into it, but he's trying down the inside, squeezing down the inside. It's touching together, but Ben Johnson holds out for P3 still. Still holds that. And for the Masters, actually holding out for P1 in their race. Technically, these two are actually racing each other for uh, trophy positions here. Obviously, trophies are done one in four. Uh, but at the moment, Ben Johnson is the one with that one. And Harrison Crook. So the gap is 19... Sorry, 17 seconds uh, to third to second. That's how much of a difference pace is. Uh, at the moment, Harrison Crook and Ian Branfield lapping about two seconds quicker than the rest of the field. So some quick driving there from those two. And again, is side by side into the horseshoe. One minute 26 remaining. Side by side for the right-hander. Jason Bear's really trying to get ahead. And I think he has done. Coming down the main straight. A lot of people getting ready to leave the circuit as well. Uh, so it's a switch between these two. Jason Bear ahead of Ben Johnson. Patrick Williams are hard. Five seconds behind Ben Johnson. Has been knocking off the time ever so much. Let's see if he can punch out a quick lap time in these next few moments. His best is a 42.86. Sorry, his best is a 42.84. His best at last was a 42.86. So he's sticking within the same as he has been doing. Ben Johnson reclaims the lead again. So the clock has ticked zero. We're on to the last stage for this day. As uh, we are now moments away from the end of the Clay Pigeon Cart Club Championships. Ben Johnson still in third. Jason Bear fourth. Patrick Winnings Rahag in fifth. Three seconds now behind Jason Bear, so is charging down, but there isn't enough time, unfortunately. So coming down the main straight then, we'll go for the last lap of this race. So Harrison Crook, then Ian Branfield four seconds later. He has just uh, dropped off the pace there uh, towards the last few stages. Point four now the gap. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, coming from the top bend then, and for the last time this year, taking the checkered flag, it's going to be Harrison Crook, who takes the checkered flag, like I said, for the last time this year, and is the final checkered flaggy for winners-wise. Ben Johnson and Jason Baird just having a moment there. <laughs> pushing each other off the track almost. So 
So there we go. That's everybody done. That's us done up here at the circuit and the end of the Clay Pigeon Club Championships. So thank you everybody for watching this year and uh, thank you for watching for today. Uh, that is all we have time for for today. Obviously, it's getting dark. Some of us want to go home, but we have a trophy presentation. So don't forget the trophy presentation is upstairs in the cafe and will be streamed over on uh, Instagram at Clay Pigeon Cart Club on Instagram. So thank you, everybody. That is the last time you'll hear my voice live this year. And we'll be back next year for round one and the 2024 championship. Thank you very much, everybody. Goodbye.